Next into the tank is Elisa, who's designed a bag that she thinks will pack a punch for every woman of a certain age. I believe my product is absolutely awesome. There's nothing else out there like it. Hello, sharks. My name's Elisa Scott, and I'm the tea lady. And this is my creation, Menopause Tea Hot Flash Tea. Each tea bag consists of five recommended herbs for menopause. They are black cohosh, wild yam, with Alanian Indian ginseng, skull cap, and red clover. Best consumed 4 p.m. and 9 p.m. by seven days a week. There's 10 individual tea bags in a box, and you can use them twice. It comes in Egyptian-style tea bag, which is nice and private for women that work in a male-dominated area. I've got a testimonial from Tracy that I'd like to share with you. Can't recommend this tea highly enough. I was hot flushing for 12 months, came across the tea, drank it twice a day, and on the fifth day, it stopped. It cost me $4.44 to make. I sell it on the internet for $20 plus $3.50 postage, $35 for overseas purchases, and sell it to IGA and Food Works for $6.99. They sell it for $9.99. So, Sharks, I'm seeking investment of $20,000 for 10% stake in my business. This will be used for distribution as I've just signed the contracts for IGA and Food Works Australia wide. I hope you can see potential in this investment so we can saturate the world one tea bag at a time. <laughs> oh. Thank you. I think that takes the record for the fastest pitch on Shark Tank. Well done. You are on a roll. Can you start that whole thing again? Because I missed it. Gotta <laughs> <laughs> slow it out. I'm going all the way, guys. Yeah. World domination for women, so they've got a natural alternative in a chemically <laughs> driven world. I love it. I love it. Love the enthusiasm. So we better try your tea then, haven't we? I would love you to try my tea. It's just like a herbal tea. Yes, yes. So where did the idea come from? This came for a dream. Oh, keep telling us this. What dream was that? I was like, wow, how awesome would it be to bring out a tea bag mm. for a woman with the five herbs for menopause? And that's what I, the dream told me to do. I went to the laptop, and this is the dream. Why, why can't right, men and... drink it? It tastes all right. What, what will it do for me? Well, a lot of women have been giving their cranky husbands a cup of tea. <laughs> Come on, look at me. <laughs> Can you put it in a beer bottle? He'll never notice the difference. <laughs> so what are your sales to date? OK, so I've sold 846 boxes. I've made $10,275, and it cost me 6754 to make, so the profit's 3521 <laughs> This woman has clearly run a business before. Oh, well, she likes numbers, that's for sure. Yeah. I like that. That's good. That's a good indicator. What sort of forecast are you looking at? OK, the future is year one. I project uh, 82,000. Second year is 1.2 million. And All the right, third right, year right. is 2.8. And that's projected on increased number of stores by 33%. And that's just IGA and food works. That's not the world domination as well. And Steve, IT is one of my weaknesses, and to get the sales generated where the biggest markup is on the internet, you have the knowledge. And you know what? I want to be someone's success story here. Right. So you've just done 10K to 82K. I think it's fantastic. It shows really good growth. To $1.2 million is you need to have some of your own tea. How do you know this actually works? It hasn't been scientifically tested. However, the five recommended herbs that are in each tea bag have been around for centuries, and the testimonials on my website that I'm getting from women worldwide are just brilliant. I'm so happy. Yeah. So the claim from that testimonial you read out from Tracy, yes. are you claiming after five days she's cured of whatever symptoms? Yes. I'm really disturbed about your lack of science in all of this. If you'd said to me, this is supporting the symptoms, I could have gone along with the, the, the fairy tale. Um, I can only go with what the feedback is on the sales. I know that. They're testimonials. Get Doctor. some science behind your product. 
OK, that's fair enough. And I like the way you speak, which is nice and blunt and straightforward. But the cure in five days, I'm just sitting here being really nice before I carve you up for making okay. claims on national TV about a product that I yeah. think is a complete and utter waste of time. And you're making claims that are bullshit. You're not giving me any facts other than a bunch of testimonials that were probably friends of yours that wrote them. So, unfortunately, oh, I'm out. Why can't you say I'm that, out. Glenn? They're not my friends. I'm You're out. so cute. That's all right. <laughs> you acknowledge Chinese medicine. It's 4,000 years of history. Yes, exactly. And we all know that Chinese medicine has huge merit. Look, good on you. You've, you've you. seen an opportunity. I mean, I, I agree. There's half a million Australian women who clearly have a challenge with menopause. Uh, I think the caution about not making claims is a wise one, and it's really about brand and getting out there. It's just very early for me, and it's, it's kind of a bit niche. But I'm out. Thank you, Andrew. 50% of the population's not niche. Women who are going through menopause do become really quite desperate. Oh, they remember their old selves. They want to be in their future self. They end up grumpy. Sleepless nights. Irrational. I've had husbands call me saying thank they you for get my wife I'm really back. upset when I get interrupted. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying. I don't know where she is. <laughs> All right. Just, uh, just let her go. Just and let for go. women in leadership positions in boardrooms and so forth, it can be really quite debilitating. My concern is about the promise. These are individual claims yes. rather than a scientific, broad-based research study. We actually don't know. Like, you don't know whether it's caused this. So for that reason, I'm out. Thank you so much for being so nice. Thank you. If this product truly does what you say it is, you will be a billionaire. Oh, without a doubt. Without a doubt. So I'm going to make you an offer. So, Lisa, what, what I'm doing is I'm, I'm taking an option on your success. It's a straight financial. I'm going to toss you a coin, and hopefully, hopefully we'll have two and a half of those coins come back in two years' time. So I'll invest the 20000 bucks right now for 30%. And I need, inside of two years, a $50,000 return. Lisa, um, I'm going to make you an offer. Thank you, Janine. Good. I'm a firm believer that people should use food as medicine more than medicine. My offer is subject to you doing research on 300 people. Yes! Awesome! And the results of that research. So my offer is... I'll give you the 20 grand, but 10% is not enough. So it'll be $20,000 for 20%. Would you like to join together? Um... But are you good friends with Janine? It's not about friendship. It's actually not about friendship. It's not about friendship at all. It's about who you can trust. Um... <laughs> <laughs> what are you going to do? Steve, I had visions of you and I together for the internet but you only want to do a financial investment. I want you to sit back and watch Janine and I ride off to the universe for women worldwide. Hey, well done. Thank you, well darling. Done. Yeah, thank That's you. It's so exciting. nice to meet you. You too. Exciting. Also, thank you. Your power. Exactly. Hey. Yes, but... Bye, Bye Lisa. Well done. Well done. Bye. Really well well done. done. <laughs> I'm really thrilled, and thank you so much for having me. This has been a dream come true. Woohoo! Oh, yeah. My name is Nicole Marla and I live in the Royal National Park, south of Sydney. So I decided to start my own business when um, we had an unexpected third child when I was 41. There, the three girls. My business journey hasn't been without some really major challenges. I fell off a horse and I was in a wheelchair for eight months. I like to think that I learned quite a bit from that period and that it demonstrates my resilience and commitment to continuing my business. 
I feel proud of where I've taken my business from where it was to where it is now. And I'd really love a partner to share the journey with going forward. Hi, my name's Nicole and I'm a passionate food entrepreneur. My business is Delicious Foods Australia and my beautiful brands are Darlicious and Veglicious. Darlicious is a range of three mildly spiced Indian lentil dals and Veglicious is a range of three French farmhouse inspired recipes. All six products display the five star health rating and they taste amazing. <laughs> I have distribution in five states, and I have a big goal to take the brands internationally. Ultimately, that's why I came here today, because I'm 51, I don't have a lifetime to build an empire. I wanna do it now. Nice. I like it. I believe I have the commitment and the resilience to take the business to its full potential with your help. And I'm here today to invite you to invest $100,000 in return for 10% equity in my growing company. Well done. So just confirming, Nicole, it was $100,000 for 10% valuing your business at $1 million. Correct. So what have we got here? What we have is five samples out of the range of six products that I have. We should start eating before it goes cold. What do you reckon? <laughs> oh, please. I'm not sure which ones each of you have, but Steve, I'm happy to see you digging in there to a lovely vegan Casserole. Can someone take a photo of that? <laughs> yeah, good on you. <laughs> Tastes fabulous. That's great. Thank you. It's really good, eh? Yeah. Can we have a look at the packets? So it's refrigerated packet. Yeah, it has a 12-week refrigerated shelf life. Right. Would you like to have a look? Thank you. Um, so you don't add anything to it, you basically nothing. heat it. Empty it in, heat it up, heat it, and every ingredient on the back you'll recognise as real food. Yeah. There's no preservatives, gluten-free, low sugar, low salt. It's just like home cooking. Yeah, well, I'm not a vegan, but I love the taste of it. Just a, a couple of sides of bacon and some pulled pork in there, it tastes even better. <laughs> so, Nicole, who is your target market? It's the busy families. Yep health conscious and those with dietary restrictions, i.e. vegetarian, plant-based, gluten-free. I actually tick a, a huge number of uh, food intolerance categories. Mm, In Australia, over 12% of the entire population states their diet is either vegan or vegetarian. Wow. Huge. It's an ever-increasing decision that people are taking here in Australia and around the world. Um, as a market, it's, it's rapidly expanding. Why don't you talk us through where your revenue is to date? So, um, calendar year end 2015, the turnover was a modest $4,000. 2016 was $68,000. Nice. 2017, I had a serious accident that saw me spend eight months in a wheelchair and I still managed to grow the business. With all of those hiccups along the way, we're still 71,000. And the forecast turnover for year end this year is 1.05 million. One point zero five mil? I think it's a stretch. I think it's a hell of a stretch, actually. Some people would say it's delusional. Nicole has impressed the sharks with her healthy range of pre-packaged meals, but her numbers are hard to swallow. 1.05 mil? I think it's a stretch. I think it's a hell of a stretch, actually. Some people would say it's delusional. The reason um, that is at the level it is, is that um, we have now only recently taken on all of the other four states. Queensland was the first. We have extrapolated real data from Queensland sales figures and applied that to the other states to end up at our 1.05. And you're selling direct to wholesale retail, right? Correct. Bearing in mind, there's a lot of opportunity in the aged care sector, yeah. hospitals, Qantas, Virgin. I've met with Qantas. They are quite excited about the number of special food categories that my product ticks. 
Virgin I've met with and they're interested in me producing a product for their executive lounge. <laughs> and I have a 90% try to buy ratio. Wow, that's good. 90%. And I should tell you that the package vegan food market in the US is at 1.75 billion annually. So Nicole. Yes, Glenn. You have a great product. You're hoping to give me some great numbers by the end of the next 12 months, but they're not there yet. Today, I'm out. Thank you anyway. Thank Appreciate you. the feedback. I think you're onto something and that this is really um, an open space. It's just not an investment for me. I completely understand. I'm out. I'm not an expert in the food industry, but I do have some really good contacts in the US. So um, because you're so sane, sensible, and only 51, <laughs> I'm going to make you an offer. Great. I'm sure I could help your business. So I'm going to offer you $100,000 for 20% of your business. Thank you very much. I really like the product. You know, it's seriously good product. I'll make you an offer. Ooh. I'll offer you $100,000 for 25%. <laughs> and the reason is 25% is I know this business, I know this space, I am more valuable than Andrew. Oh, I mean... In this space. How, if do, you, you, how do you if put you, a price on value? If you were talking HR, I oh, would have to say the same. Me. So $100,000 for 25%. All right, so she's 25%, I'm 20%. Steve-o, what about a vegan product? Um, I'm a huge fan of the low-carbohydrate diet, and these definitely are that. So I'm going to make you an offer. I'm going to offer you uh, 100k for 15%. I'm a straight financial investor in this. I'm after, within three years, at least a two times return. Which basically means he's giving you a conditional offer. And you think you're going to nail 1.05 million bucks? That should not scare you. So we've got Andrew, 100k for 20%. Janine, 100,000 for 25%. And Stephen, with his rather complex deal, has offered you 100,000 for 15%. Just be very careful about the complexity of the deals. Well, at least I'm honest, right? I'm sitting there saying, I'm bringing money, nothing else. They're all making up stuff I they understand. have to bring along. So and I'm not here today for just money. But thank you so very much for your offer. So did you just discount my offer? Thank you very much, but no. Ultimately, for me to make a success, I need the correct mentoring and contacts. So for that reason, I would like to accept Janine's yes. offer. Okay. And thank you, Andrew, for That's joining. Right. Thank you. Wow. We'll thank you so much. Well done. Thank you done a great so job. Much. I it's really, really appreciate great. your She's time. Fabulous. Thank Definitely you. Definitely going to be a customer. I want a lifetime supply, OK? All right. It's on <laughs> the way. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Oh, well. Bad decision, bad decision. You know, she went for the glamour instead of the brains. Never mind. You can't <laughs> Excuse have Excuse me on both. Next into the tank is an entrepreneur willing to give away almost half his business to hook a shark. Oh, here he is. To get a deal on Shark Tank would mean the world. Oh. There is nothing that I wouldn't do to bring the company forward. I'm absolutely ready to take on the sharks. Bring it on. Oh, nice hand. Hello, sharks. My name is Arno Pakas. I'm the master chocolatier and founder of Ganache Chocolate. And I'm here today to ask for $600,000 investment in exchange to 40% equity in Ganache Chocolate. Oh. Looks like nice chocolate, doesn't it? They look amazing. Ganache Chocolate offers the ultimate chocolate experience in Melbourne. With two chocolate lounges in prime locations, we offer the most innovative product, Macarons Patisserie Cakes. Ganache Chocolate also has a very strong wholesale arm. We offer chocolate making classes and the best hot chocolate Melbourne has. In order to capture the wholesale market in Sydney and Canberra, I would like to open a chocolate lounge in those two cities and service the wholesale market from those venues. With your help and your support, I would like to take Ganache to $15 million turnover I would like to achieve in five years.
But the best way to convince you on board of Ghana's chocolate is to let you try some chocolate. Yes. Oh, yes. What do you recommend? Oh, I would recommend one of each. The chocolate bars and a very innovative product over there is our, what we call, Delectable Delights. It's a pan product. I like cherry ripes. Oh, my God. This is amazing. Here we have our Amarina half. This one. Yep. Which is made with Amarina cherries from Northern Italy. Mm. Beautiful. No, it's good. You know what I reckon? Money talks, but chocolate sings. That mm. wasn't really better than sex. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Sorry. That's right, we're on the show. <laughs> So you sound like you've got an accent. I grew up in Germany where I did my apprenticeship. There's such a thing in Germany as a chocolate apprenticeship, is there? <laughs> I actually have a master's degree as a chocolatier in Patissier. It's always been a dream for me to come to Australia. I always wanted to have my own chocolaterie patisserie. I've been to both of your stores. That's fantastic to hear. That's and I've brilliant. tried many of your products and your cakes are divine and your Thank you so desserts. much. That's a great honour to have you there. Do you have a family of your own? No, I haven't. So you're, you're, you're married to chocolate? My, my wife is called Ganache Chocolate, yes. <laughs> and what a beautiful wife she is. Amazing. Eats. Absolutely. I eat about a kilo of chocolate a week. <laughs> <laughs> you're looking for $600,000 for 40% of your company, valuing it at 1.5 mil. That's a big percentage that you're prepared to give up. That's correct, yes. Take us through the numbers, can you? Our turnover in the last 10 years was between 2.5 and $3 million. And the last financial year was 2.7 million with an EBITDA of 333,000. That's bottom line. Okay, that's good. Okay. Do you have a partner in the business? I do. I'm with 49% and I'm 51%. So does she work in the business? Yes, absolutely. She's in retail and accounts. Well, I just want to do a reality check here. You're about to think about an investment that's coming to your business that will dilute you. You'll go from being a 51% shareholder to quite a lot less than that. They'll both be just around 30% 30, 30 each, and the new shareholder will be 40%. How do you feel about that? I think a 30% of a $15 million turnover business He's still way more than what we're doing now. You're teasing me with something you haven't told us yet. No, he's, no. Uh, he's, he's actually giving us the right answer. He's no. saying he's valuing the percentage he's got left if we help grow the business. And how soon are we going to be a $15 million business? You open two new stores, they are going to burn cash until they pop and become profitable. How long do you have to carry them? Until we start seeing a return, I think yes. <laughs> yes, it's a great answer. <laughs> I strongly believe within three months, six months, we have break even. And in about two, three years, there will be a return on the investment. Just to, okay, let's understand your business model. Right, Cafe One, the one in the city. What's the profit of the one in the Collins Street? 3.54%. Yep, and yep. what about the Cafe in South Yarra? 8%. Okay, which is actually quite small. It is, yep. So what is your percentage of cost of goods? 37%. 30% and what about labour? 36%. Yep, and rent? The city store is very high. Yep. At roughly about 20%. Ooh. And South Yarra is at 12%. Who runs your stores? My your service manager. We okay. have a very good dedicated team. Well, I don't know if they're that good. 36% of your sales in staff wages isn't good. I agree, it needs improvement. Is it fair to say that you love chocolate more than you love business? Yes, I do, I do, and I have learned a lot, and I wish I would have known 10 years ago what I know now. For you to offer up a percentage that will give us a majority share is saying to me, let me be what I'm great at. I need help with the business no, side. I think it's worse than that, it's a distress flare. It's an absolute distress flare is fired up to basically say, I can't do this, I need help. We've been operating very successfully for the last 10 years. You, you can't have put $800,000 in, you can't have operated 10 years and only be turning over $200,000 profit a year. We had a few setbacks. What are your setbacks? I was diagnosed with cancer six years ago. Oh, I'm so sorry. All good? Yeah, all good. Okay. Back on deck and 
got the energy back, so here I am. They're amazing. I actually think mm. you've got a, such an amazing product. Yes. I just worry about the business model. It's got me concerned, and I just wonder how flexible you are at changing direction. If you could get to 15 million another way, would you be open to that? Absolutely. I'm more than happy to listen to your suggestion. OK. I don't know that I can help you the way you need to be helped and the way you've asked for help because of the percentage that you're offering us today. I'm out. Thank you for considering. I don't know anything about chocolate, aside from consuming it, as you can probably tell. Um, I've really enjoyed your pitch. I've really enjoyed listening to your um, professionalism. Um, I'm out and I, I wish you all the best. Thank you so much. Much appreciated. I've enjoyed hearing your story. You know, it's an obsession, a passion. I have no doubt with your focus you will succeed. But it won't be with my money. I'm out. Thank you so much. Thanks, Thanks Anna. for considering. I've got another business I'm invested in that is going to be a very good wholesale client. And frankly, I think I can make more money out of your chocolates than you can at this stage. But for this pitch, I'm out. Thank you so much. We have one shark left swimming in the water. In fairness, you have been operating for this long. You should be further ahead. I agree. There's some challenges that I'm just trying to look, trying to sure. dig a bit deeper to sort of understand it. Um, they produce chocolate. So she's going to make you an offer. This will be good. Nah, she's pushing out, you can tell. Chocolatier Arno is so desperate to hook a shark, he's ready to sell nearly half his business. But his asking price is a massive $600,000. In fairness, you have been operating for this long. You should be further ahead. I agree. There's some challenges that I'm just trying to look, trying to sure. dig a bit deeper to sort of understand it. Um, they produce chocolate, so she's going to make you an offer. This will be good. Nah, she's pushing out, you can tell. I'll make you an offer. There we go. The offer is 600000 for 40%. But it has three conditions. That I meet your partner and she's not Godzilla. <laughs> the second one is you have to get your cost of goods down to 33%. The third is that the wages have to be a maximum of 30%. That shouldn't be difficult. I think that's poor management. So there are my three conditions. And there's my offer. Mm. 600,000 for 40%. That's exactly what I asked for. So I very much agree with you. Thank hey. you so much. I'm looking forward to That's exactly on board. Lovely. Thank you so much. You're Absolutely. on your way. Yes. You're this close to breaking through. Okay. You really are. The Good product's to see you again, amazing. You too. Thank you so much, everyone. Bye. Take care. Well done. Thank you. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. Me too. This could be phenomenal. And I've got 40% of a business. I should get my money back in two years. Good heart decision. No, it was the business says, you watch, mate. You watch this space. First into the tank tonight is Edwina, who wants to make one of life's most amazing moments a whole lot better. My business is something that I believe every woman, every expecting parent should have access to. Thank you, Shark, so much for having me. My name's Edwina Sharrick. I come from regional Tamworth, an awesome town in New South Wales, and I am the founder of Birthbeat. I'm a registered midwife, mother of two, and now a CEO of a company. And I'm here to ask for $200,000 for 10% in my company. So let me tell you a little bit about why Birthbeat came about and what it is we actually do. When I was pregnant with my own daughter, Polly, 
I didn't actually do antenatal classes. I believe because I'm a midwife, I'm gonna know what to do. How silly was I? <laughs> It made me realise, had I been more educated, I would have been more empowered in that experience. And my husband wouldn't have been as scared. <laughs> it was then that I found out that 41% of maternity units have closed in Australia in the last 15 years. We have 300,000 births in Australia. A lot of those in rural, regional and remote Australia. So I thought that's not good enough. So I created my own classes. So in November last year, Birthbeat launched online. It's an online portal that has over 14 hours of simple to watch videos, right from prenatal yoga through to what to expect in labour, how do you know when you're in labour, what to pack, through to how to breastfeed your baby, change a nappy, safely swaddle, safely sleep. Since going online, we've experienced huge success, we've got a scalable model now to get out to all of Australia and potentially the world. Thanks very much, Edwina. So you're looking for 200k at a $2 million valuation? 10%. I am. Edwina. So um, you're a midwife. How many babies have you delivered? Oh, hundreds. Hundreds? Right? Hundreds. I'm not actually a clinical midwife now. Okay. I've resigned from my clinical position to focus 100% on birth beat. That's really great. I That'll... love people who leave their jobs and focus 100% on their business. <laughs> it's a really? good thing, isn't it, Dr. It really? is a good That's thing. It's amazing. It's fantastic. That's great. So you've got a real passion for this stuff, haven't you? I sure do. This is a genuine product that improves the experience. So what I teach my women is it's about being educated, understanding the process, which removes the fear. And I see that women actually birth better and have a more positive experience or a positive outcome if they're educated. So Edwina, tell us how it works. How does it work? Oh yeah, yeah. can I show you around the portal? Sure, yeah. Would sure. you like yeah. to have That's a look? That's a good idea. So, Okay. Well, this is the epidural exercise. That sounds like fun. So many people don't understand when they say, I'm going to have an epidural, the process that's involved. Let's not kid ourselves. You're not the first one to put birthing classes online. No, that's right. There are some companies that do it. What is unique about Birthbeat is that I'm actually a registered midwife. It's obstetric endorsed. So we've had four obstetricians go through the program. Plus we offer prenatal yoga through to the breastfeeding consultant. So it's all packaged into this one-stop shop. What does your husband think about the idea of you giving up your full-time job and starting a business? Look, my husband's a very patient man, oh, thankfully. That's good. Um, what does because he do? he's an engineer. He's the numbers analytical brain. Edwin. An engineer. So did he did he engineer the $2 million valuation or do you have some mathematics behind that? No, Can I do have some. Finances? I was gonna say I do have some mathematics behind that. Um, okay, so the unit is $297 to get the entire modules. Yep. So 14 or, hours or 14 of videos. Hours. Yep. I get $240 profit per unit. We've sold 69 units, so we have $19,000. I really see this as, you know, maybe lower the price and then subscribe going forward. You know, what happens with the terrible twos? What happens with the one-year-old? So you can keep them on there forever. I actually have a plan. So my email system is quite sophisticated. I can know what date of birth, so then I know four months later that, hey, we're looking at starting solids, so now's the time to engage with my customer again. Yes. And say, you need to know what to do if your baby chokes. Which leads into a subscription model. Yes. Which then, you know, which is, you know, God, if you can get that one right. Yeah. That's, um... Um... What are you mumbling at? What's your plan to take this forward? I'm very excited about some potential contracts that are coming up. We have a 50-unit trial signed with one of Australia's largest banks to provide this to their employees in part of their corporate wellness package. That corporate bank employs 55,000 employees. Oh, very good. We are also deep in discussion with HCF for Birthbeat to be the preferred provider for their online platform. So is HCF talking about incorporating it into one of their programs? Is it? Yes. So it... And so how big is the HCF population, the HCF? They have 6,000 births a year. Do you notice I've not said anything yet? He does a lot of talking, doesn't he? I'm going to say something one day. Just like he thinks that none of it, other of us can have this conversation. No, exactly. Edwina. <coughs> Naomi, have you got something to say? Yes, hello, Edwina. So, so just Sorry. Quickly, well, I was in the middle of a question at the same time. No, you choked. You can have it next, OK? No, no, so, here we so go, with Edwina. To HCF, with, it's with, my with, turn. With respect to HCF Catalyst, 
What did that? What did so I invest that was the option? I can't hear either of you. Sorry. I'm going to keep You've talking until I get my question because I'm getting tired of getting these my questions over. Platform. And I'm going to go blah blah blah. And I'm going to interrupt the entire thing. I feel like I'm talking to my children. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's a very good observation. Yeah. Edwina, um, I know Naomi's desperate to talk to you. Naomi, sorry, <sighs> I'm patient. No, you're not. You, you often demonstrate you're not patient, so that's all right. <laughs> I'm patient. The reason why often we need to be as investors is because it doesn't happen in the near term and it might be yep. a long play. See, the thing we don't net yet know about your business yep. is what it's going to cost to acquire a customer yep. to get the growth that you need. So what are you spending on marketing? Each couple receives a book. It's posted in the mail. They also get a little bag of goodie bags and then that's hand posted to them. Do you have a marketing expense above the line? Not yet. What I have done is an online campaign. With that is two videos. Those two videos, one on Instagram, one on Facebook. One's been viewed 52,000 times, one's been viewed 64,000 times. So I'm still struggling to, to make the big leap from, from $19,000 to your $2 million valuation. Yep. Give me the number that we think we're going to see in the next 12 months. 2020, I want to be a $5 million business, and I will be. <laughs> Based on? That we're going to sign two corporates that are both six-figure licences. So they will buy their licences. So give me, give me a number that you probably will hit on a revenue line for the next 12 months. I expect us to be 500000 in the next 12 months. OK. I'm going to tell you where I'm at. First of all, well done. I mean, you are the authentic face of, of uh, positive birth experiences in Australia. I think that's great. I can't say I'm ever going to be a, a user of your product. <laughs> it's not an area where I feel I can add a huge amount of value. I wish you well, but I'm out. Thank you very much. So, Edwina, I love what you're doing, especially with a focus on rural and regional Australia. Yeah. Um, I think you're already evolving your strategic partnerships in the right direction. So I don't think you need any of us. <laughs> OK. Good luck. Thanks, Glenn. But I'm out, Edwina. Thank you. Glenn and I are out. Three of you left. I think you've done an amazing job with getting a minimum viable product. What I don't see is the fact that you can scale the infrastructure that you've got to justify your valuation. So for this investment, I'm out. Thank you very much, Naomi. Well, when you look at investing, part of that, we invest in the founders, and you're great. And what you've done is fantastic. Entrepreneurs, you know, I really identify with them. I love what you're doing, especially from regional Australia and for regional Australia. I think he's in. It sounds um, like it. I think I'm confused. So I've never been to a anything natal class in my life. Oh, and you've got the youngest babies. Not something I'm dreadfully proud of. <laughs> but um, hey, yeah, the babies are healthy. I'm still married. It's all good. <laughs> um, so I don't quite get this. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I can't see your way towards the numbers where you're going to get close to this. Look, I, I think in order just to, for us to leave here sometime this year, I'm, I'm going to go out. Okay, I thank you so much, I can't make my mind up. I really, really do wish you all the best. <laughs> so, four sharks are out, Janine's left. You, um, <sighs> been doing your business long, uh, but you haven't been doing this business long. You are authentic, though. You are the real deal you have the credibility to come out and be an authority in this space. Oh, God. Do it. Do it. Is she going to make an offer or are we just teasing? Midwife Edwina has started a business selling online birthing classes with plans to expand her range into the early childhood years. But with four sharks out, Janine is her last hope. You, um, <sighs> been doing your business long, uh, but you haven't been doing this business long. 
You are authentic though. You are the real deal. You have the credibility to come out and be an authority in this space. Are you going to make an offer or are we just teasing? Have you seen the Muppets? Yeah, there's two old guys that sit at the thing and just wing and carry on. <laughs> it's these two. Seriously, I it's miss these. Piggy. <laughs> come on, come on. I'll make you an offer. Thank you, Janine. There ah, you go. This is good. I think because you're just getting going. 200,000 for 20% is too much at this point. I will give you $100,000 for 20% and a $100,000 loan. Okay. What are you going to do? I would absolutely love to take well, Janine's. Oh, oh, thank you very much. Wow, that was easy. <laughs> thank you. So oh, thank you so much, Naomi. Really thank great. You. Really Thank great you. pitch. So all the best. Fantastic. Well done. Thank you so much for your time. That's and I great. genuinely think we are going to make such an impact for women in Australia. We will. Thank you. Thank well you. Done. Bye. <laughs> Very impressive young lady. Gee, I liked her. It's amazing. That was amazing. My heart is like going, I seriously think she's about 220 beats per minute. She ticked all the boxes. Oh, wait. Articulate. Clear vision. Confident. Done the work. She is the real deal. She makes me excited about young entrepreneurs. First up, a scientist who wants to sell the sharks on the food of the future. My name is Sky. I'm 31 years old and I'm from Sydney. I never used to have a Barbie doll when I was a little kid. I always used to be out in the garden collecting bugs and getting really dirty. <laughs> I've always wanted to be an entomologist, which is a bug scientist. This is my giant burrowing cockroach. Her name's Woodstock, and she's about 10 years old. She likes to eat eucalyptus leaves, and I take her out to do educational shows. Some of the bugs actually live for quite a long time, so they have really, really interesting personalities. She actually likes to blow kisses, and she likes to be pet as well, just like a cat or a dog would. The challenge for me definitely has been trying to get Australian consumers over that initial ick factor when it comes to bugs. They're very nutritious. I think they'll either love it or they'll hate it, so I'm prepared either way. Hello, shark. My name is Sky and my company is called Edible Bug Shop. I'm asking for a $170,000 investment for a 20% equity in our company. Yes, that's right. I'm about to sell you on all these fantastic edible bugs. So for the past seven years, we've been breeding edible insects specifically for human consumption. We've developed a pattern pending uh, insect flower as well, which is high in protein. It's low in fat, it's got lots of good micronutrients in it, like calcium and iron as well. And I'm sure you're thinking right now, why should I invest in edible insects? Yeah. Well, <laughs> by the year 2050, the world's population will grow to over 9 billion people. And traditional forms of livestock that we have at the moment just won't be enough to support this population. Edible insects are definitely the future of food and we aim to stamp ourselves as number one in the world in edible insect production. Now, I welcome any questions that you have and if you would like to try some bugs today, I definitely welcome that as well. I'd love to try some. What would you like to try? <laughs> I would say the cookie. A cookie? <laughs> it's a good starter because it's not too um, bug-like, yes. <laughs> What am I about to try? What, what is this? So this is a chocolate chip cookie, but we replace some of the flour with the insect flour, so it makes it high in protein, it's high in calcium and iron as well. I'll pass today, but yeah. I'll think about it. I might come up and grab one later if I get hungry. Mm. Not bad. Can you give us some comparisons, please? If I've got cricket flour or, or insect flour... Yep, yep and the nutritional benefit of that compared to regular flour, what is the benefit? Yep, so the, um, the insect flour is 65% protein. Um, it's got double the amount of calcium as milk, three times the amount of iron as spinach does. So it's kind of a superfood. 
How do you know? Have you done clinical trials? We've done, yeah, we have all the, all the um, NADO accreditation. So the, the, the carbohydrate content of that uh, flour? There's about uh, 5.6 grams per 100 grams. Is that all, really? Yeah. So and can you make bread from it? So what sort of flour is it? So it's just basically we dry the crickets and we grind them up into a fine powder. So it doesn't replace regular flour, it's more of a supplement item. For instance, with the normal cookie recipe, you'd replace about a third of the regular flour with the insect flour. So, so what, what is the cost to produce a kilo of bug flour? Um, so it costs us about $6 per kilo. Wow, OK. Um, and then we would sell that at the moment for about $80 a kilo. Excuse me, 80 Yeah. $80 per yep. kilo. Oh, nice. It's a good margin. How do you think you can overcome what's going to be a natural resistance that people don't like the thought of eating bugs? It's hard for people because you don't necessarily think of a cow when you're eating a steak. It doesn't look the same. I definitely see the insect flower as the way of the future with insect eating. So you're getting all the nutritional benefits of eating the bugs without having to look at them. Four out of five sharks have tried that. I actually think you've got 80% market acceptance in some respects. I mean, that's one way to look at this. When I ride my Vespa, I eat a bug or two, believe me, on a Saturday morning, but <gasps> I'm just not a bug-eating guy, and I think for that reason, I'm out. Well, I think you can't sell it unless you're willing to try it, so exactly. that's probably a right option. <laughs> that's why I'm out. You got any vital statistics with respect to your sales? And yep, whatnot? so our turnover for last year was 150000 that was 60% profit, so 90000 After all expenses are taken out of the business, you're keeping 90000 bucks. Yeah. yeah, OK. Apart from the money, what are the other pieces that you think you're missing? I'm an entomologist and a food scientist. I've got a science brain. I kind of need someone to help me expand the business so that, you know, it's more appealing to a wider audience, not just scientists. And you want to work with this full-time, 100%? Well, I work in my business full-time at the moment. Is there anything in that process that is patentable, that is unique to you, that you can keep? Yeah, so we've got the, the bug flower is actually patent pending at the moment, so um, the patent will be pushed through on that soon. So competitors, who are your competitors in the Australian market? Um, or nobody. world market? Because people would be importing bug flower. No, um, you can't import edible insects into Australia because of our strict quarantine requirements. So there is no other competitor in this market but you? Yes. You tick a lot of the boxes for me in terms of what makes a fledgling business a big business, but where it leads me to is the valuation. Valuing the business at 850, I'm tempted, but I'm, I'm not tempted at your current valuation. I'm, uh, I think I'm, I'm at the point where I would make an investment, but I, I would want to bring your valuation down. I don't really think it's unrealistic to have a valuation like that considering, you know, the range of products that we have already established and the, the valuation of the pattern as well, which is the main thing. I mean, it is very tempting. But I do think the valuation on your business is the, is the challenge. Um, I'm out. So Sky, I do see competition for you. So whilst there might not be somebody in the direct space, anything that is a protein enhancer that's, that's not this is actually competition to you. At this point, it's not an investment for me, so I'm out. The big issue here is the fact that it, it's, it's niche. It's still, this is not gonna be accepted in every household in Australia. I think you need to take a good hard look at your valuation. I'll, uh, I'll get out now. Thank you. I'm done. So where are we? Janine? I will make you an offer. I will give you the 170000 but I want half. Next, will Sky cope with a shark taking such a big bite out of her business? I think 50% is a little bit much to give away. I do think I need to be an equal partner. And still ahead, there is nothing currently on the market. This is the first. The Aussie invention shining new light on medical technology. Kids will think this is a lightsaber. And this, this is amazingly over-engineered. 
Honestly, you'd throw half this away. And sharing the load, two mates who've broken the back of a common workplace problem. We have not approached any major manufacturer with this product, and it's only been seen by a handful of friends. Not for long. Not for long. Sky Blackburn wants $170,000 for 20% of her edible bug business. Food entrepreneur Janine Ellis is the only shark to make an offer, but she's demanding a big slice of the company. I will give you the 170,000, but I want half. So 50%, 170,000. I do like that Janine has the expertise in the food area, which is obviously more beneficial to the business that we have at the moment. But I think 50% is a little bit much to give away, seen as all of the work that we've put into the business to start with. So would you consider 30%? I wouldn't know. Because the, the critical thing is you need people in the space, in retail, in food, and I truly think that where I've been in the last 14 years in this space, I do think that that is actually a very fair valuation for where it is and what we can also add. Yes, there's no question that you've put your blood, sweat and tears in this and this is your baby, and I, and I don't want to diminish that in any way, shape or form. And I do think that, you know, I do, th I do honestly also think it's a high risk for me because I think it might be just that tweak too early, even though your sales are saying it's, it's sort of coming. I love the protection. I think you're a very intelligent woman and so I think we could work really well together. But I think for us to, to really drive it, I do think I need to be an equal partner. Congratulations. Just think about the other 50% being worth millions of dollars. Don't worry about the value. <laughs> That's the well, way you've got will to think be. about it. Will it. Be. it will be. Well Thank done. You. I was really considering whether giving 50% away was the right thing to do. And I think um, we've come away with a good partner. She has a quality that's very rare, I think, which is that she's very smart, she's done a great job, but she's still prepared to learn. She's she kind. will listen and she will be coached. And that's great. First to face the Sharks tonight, a pair of Perth boys with a saucy proposition. We are so excited about going out there. We want to see Tommy Sugo on every street corner in Australia. All we need is the right shark to take us there. Hi guys, I'm Nathan and this is my brother-in-law Joel. Hello. We own Tommy Sugo Spaghetti and Espresso. We're asking for an investment of 350000 for 15% share equity. Joel's going to get started, cook up a quick uh, meal sample for you guys to try at the end. Tommy Sugo, we have a, a fairly simple strategy for our customers. They come in, they'll order a pasta, they pick a sauce and then they choose their sides. We set up our first store in Western Australia. So we've been operational for eight months now and we are on target to turn over 712000 in our first 12 months and we're servicing about 250 customers a day. I guess our, our major point of difference with our product, apart from the fact that it absolutely tastes fantastic, uh, is the fact that we control the supply chain. Our father-in-law is Italian and he's been making pasta for a long time. He produces all of the food in a automated commercial kitchen. The big picture, we would like to try and achieve 100 stores in the next five years and look at a potential sale at the end of that to a, a major food group. The other thing about our business is we are incredibly fast. We can produce from order a meal within one to six minutes. And that way, because we cook it fresh, we maintain the integrity of the product. So I'm going to hand over to Joel and he's going to give you some um, tastes of what we do. 
What I've actually cooked up is our fresh egg linguine pasta. And we're just serving it with our Tommy Sugo pesto. And we've also got our arancini balls, which is a, a, a traditional Sicilian street food. A lot of people call them out the, the amaze balls. That's how amazing they are. So <laughs> these are ready to go now as well. I'll serve these guys up and I'll bring them over for you guys to have a try. And I hope you enjoy. While you're serving, can I ask where, where your name came from? Yes, yeah, we deliberated on that for a very long time. I bet you did. But Tommy is slang for tomato and ah. sugo in Italian is sauce. So ah. it kind of reflects what we do. It's... it's tomato uh, sauce. Tomato sauce. <laughs> <laughs> we do that. It's a tomato sauce in an in a, in a Italian-Australian sort of uh, yeah. way, way of saying it. So you give us the top line for one store, 712,000 bucks. What's the bottom line? Bottom line is uh, we're netting about 100,000, 14%. Tasty. Delicious, by the way. The arancini balls, amazing. They're, they're very nice. They, I was going to warn you they were a bit hot. <laughs> Tastes pretty good. I think the pasta was particularly good. How much capital have you put into the business yourselves? How much cash have you put into the business? About $120,000. $120,000. Yep. And some of that was in the acquisition of the site. Can I ask, with that 712 revenue number and the $100,000 profit, you must have extrapolated that number. You, that's Absolutely. just a... So yep. is, that, is that a mature number? Is that a, a, a hopeful number? Or is I think that it's a pretty... quite realistic. Realistic. It's actually... We've been a bit conservative in, right. in, with those numbers. So you think a store could do more than that if it was optimised and...? We've got a growth rate of about 12% per month currently. So is this, is this for the worldwide rights or Australian rights? Or uh, what, what we're talking about Australia. Australia at the moment. Oh, so you have yep. something overseas then, do you? Not at the moment, but we're working on it. But we're not being offered that. What we would suggest is that we would start off with Australia. You uh, so would just do the whole thing. You don't split it up because it's split focus. It's just, you just wouldn't even do that. Let's do it that way then. Yeah, I definitely. <laughs> good, good advice. advice. Yeah. <laughs> For the valuation, you got a $2.1 million valuation. 2.3. 2.3, sorry, yeah. yeah, that's right. What are the investors getting for that? What's, what are they buying into? You're getting us. Yeah. And you're getting a part of the 15% uh, share of the existing business and the cash flow. Tell us about your father-in-law. So he owns, runs the, the main kitchen? Correct, yeah. Is that a part of the offering the deal? Is that separate? Uh, that's separate. We, I guess we get the, all the benefits of that without having to invest into it. He's got a, a very good commercial setup, which means that he supplies quite large customers, which means that as we roll the stores out, we'll have a very good supply chain. What, what does that do to your costs? Because your um, father-in-law probably drives a very hard bargain. <laughs> <laughs> so we believe we're getting a good deal, um, and I think that reflects in our net profit. Right. Does he only make pasta for you or for others? Yeah, he has other commercial customers as right, well. So how much of your business is his business, so to speak? We'd be a small component of that. What, what, small can be 50% or small can be 1%? It would... Uh, at this stage, I'd say we're close to the 1%. OK, right. Okay. So he's got a big business? Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm reasonably scared this is a fairly nepotistic business. Lots of family involved. I mean, to me, there's a family contract. That's, that's, that's a mild warning sign, to be honest. At this stage, it's working really well. So. so can you break that agreement if need be? So if he starts su supplying bad, bad produce, what happens? <laughs> First of all, he's Sicilian, and that's against the grain. <laughs> but should, should that scenario ever happen, we... I mean, we're fairly involved in the... So you can, you can go to another provider? We you could. You can go to another supplier? Correct. We could, yeah. The, the concern and the risk is relying on one supplier without having the ability to go sorry you're not working, and still having a Christmas dinner that actually is not uncomfortable. <laughs> Have you given that some thought with regard to, you know, never do business with family, they say? Yeah, it, it certainly has. It's a double-edged double sword. So, um, 
Look, I think there's, there's always ways to, to handle that. Nathan, Joe, I, I'm, I'm ready to make a decision, so I'll, I'll, uh, I'll pile in here. The food's great, and your enthusiasm and your innovation is, is great, and, you know, I, I get the originality of the supply chain, but I don't see the right barriers to entry for me as an investor. I'm not even going to get into valuation, but for that reason, I'm out. On that, I'll, I'll pick up on valuation if you want. You're after 23 times profit. Projected profit. 23 times the projected profit? Well, you're on a $2.3 million valuation on a hundred and something thousand in profit, right? 100,000. That's yep. about 23 times. Okay. When you say that out loud, it's, a, it's an interesting statement, right? I'm actually deeply concerned about the family connection. I think that can be limiting. I love the food, but at, at this point in time, I'm gonna, I'm gonna jump out, but good luck. It is a very cluttered market. At the drop of a hat, anything can happen. As a result, I'm out. My first girlfriend after school was Sicilian. I understand what having a Sicilian father-in-law, <laughs> though we weren't married, I understand what that's like. What if, for some strange reason, your two beautiful wives decided that they wanted to upgrade? <laughs> and all of a sudden, you two guys are no longer the sons-in-law, you're the ex-sons-in-law. Um, you've got a lot of eggs in a very important basket there, and there's definitely a risk involved there. So for that reason only, I'm out. The, the valuation is, is just too high. You know, $2.3 million. You're dreaming. Um, Got to set our dreams high, don't we? <laughs> uh, you, you do, you do. But uh, the thing I do like about you guys, I truly believe, because I'm sitting here and coached you, that you're coachable. <laughs> right. Our ears we are open. <laughs> um, we're a long way away from the $350,000 for this phenomenal business. But I do want to play with you. I tell you what, I'll do your deal. I'm going to give you your 350,000. And I'm going to break it into $150,000 in equity. Um, and a $200,000 loan, which will give us five more stores so we can put on the ground like that. For that, I want 51%. Perth foodies Nathan and Joel are offering 15% of their Tommy Sugo pasta business for a $350,000 investment. The valuation is just too high. You're dreaming. Food and retail expert Janine Alice is the only shark still in, but she's demanding a much larger portion size. I want 51%. 51. You know what I can bring to this business. So you're valuing the business at 300,000 or less because you've got control. But that's what it's worth. That's all it's worth right now. Actually, in genuinely, we're only talking, let's put it in perspective. You're valuing it on big plans, but the reality is you're one store that hasn't even had 12 months worth of trade. And the fact that's all you've got. Why I think that I'd like to do it with you is because I think I, I could work with you. Now you know why this is called the shark tank. <laughs> I know you may not think it, but it is a very, very generous deal. You know, to us, it's, it is about the person we're working with um, more than 
more than so much the money as well. Um, would you, um, and obviously that's a large jump from, from our initial conversation, but saying that, um, I, I think, what, if, what about if we, we went into it together, side by side, and we would have a, a, a completely even split at 50%. We would still learn from you and be open to what you say. Um, so I don't think there would be an issue with if you think one thing that we would want to go the opposite way, but um, I think we'd probably consider and be quite happy with a 50%, 50-50 share. Done. Oh, yeah. Done. Beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> Great arancini balls for lunch. <laughs> Thank you so much. I'm glad you got gluten free. <laughs> Congratulations. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Thank guys. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. I reckon that 100 stores uh, may be a bit of an underestimate. Perfect partner. That's, bad. That's a great deal you've done. Great deal. We get free arancini balls. Just remember your friends. <laughs> I'm Sophie. I'm Catherine. And, and we're, we're the, the dinner, dinner ladies. ladies. Catherine and I met about nine years ago when our oldest sons, who are now 16, were best friends when they were in kindy. I just dropped the kids off at school and Sophie saw me across the street and yelled out, I've got a business proposition for you. And we went up to a cafe up the street and we pretty much nutted out what we were going to do, uh, but I don't think we expected where it would go. We'd love to join up with someone with some business expertise. Yeah. We started this business knowing nothing at all, and now I think we've got to the point where we'd really like to know how to take it to the next level. I just hope one of the sharks wants to get on for the next part of the journey. <laughs> Hello, I'm Catherine. And I'm Sophie. And we are... The Dinner Ladies. The Dinner Ladies. Hey, welcome. Um, today we're asking for a $140,000 investment to start our new business, Dinner Ladies Hot To Go. That will be for a third share of that business, which is a spin-off from our existing business, which is the Dinner Ladies, which is a home-delivered dinner business. We started that seven years ago in Catherine's shed in the backyard and cooked a couple of meals on camp stoves and took them around and delivered them to some friends and family. And we used to email everyone once a week and say, this is what we're cooking this week. So since our first email, uh, we sent it to 10 people. We now send it to 6,500 people. We delivered to thousands of homes across Sydney. Um, and this is one of our delivery vans. So our hot to go food truck will look a little like this. But it'll have van. an awning and a, a hatch and it'll be, we'll be serving hot food um, to people on the street. We've got a production kitchen that serves our home delivery business, but that production kitchen can be equally used to produce food for a different business. And our home delivery business really suits people who are organised, but we realise there's a whole heap of people out there who aren't that organised, who... Who want great food yeah. right now. So each week we have a new menu that is delivered to homes across Sydney, but also we will select from that, say, the four dishes that are most appropriate to serve in our food truck, so that we will then have hot available at the food truck, but it'll be the same kitchen supplying both. So $140,000 for 33% of the new business yet to be started, so valuing that at around $420,000. And then the core business, this existing business, is sitting behind that new business, but it's not part of the investment. Yes, correct. Well, it's, it is a big part of the investment in that... Well, it's it... not what we're buying into. No, that's right. <laughs> OK, why don't we show us the food and... So this one is a porchetta panini with apple fennel slaw. Uh, thank you very much. This is um, a Thai chicken and lemongrass salad. Oh, thank you. Looks beautiful. Delicious. We won't be offended if you don't eat all of it. Mm -hmm. Beautiful food. Cool. Beautiful. Great. 
What is your current infrastructure here? We've heard you've got a big commercial kitchen. Where yeah. is it located? How does it all work? We've got a lovely commercial kitchen in Matraville, which we bought. So we went yeah. to the bank and they loaned us the money. And, we... and you paid that off? No, 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 we're paying, no, it, we're we're paying, paying it, it off. How, so much, how much debt? How much debt's Sorry. left? Uh, Sorry. We've got 950,000 left to pay. Could I ask about the projections for the new business in terms of revenue and potential profit? To break even in the van, it would take 130 dishes a day, um, serving them out. What cost per sale? $10. 130 people at $10, $10 a head. $10 a gotcha. dish. But by the time we're serving 500 people a day, the... then we've worked out our profit will be 400000 Per van, sorry? Or... Per van, yes. Per van. How many vans do you have in dinner, ladies? We've got three. Three. And what sort of what's the sales on, on, on that business? Our annual turnover last year was 2.2 million, and we anticipate next year it's going to be three and a half million. Most years we experience a uh, 50% growth. And how much of that do you keep? What's your profit? 10%. Um, but that's proper. But profit. that's over and above. We pay ourselves, but we're constantly reinvesting. So in you're, so you're paying we, yourself the real salary. Yeah. Yeah, you're... Our interest hasn't been in in maximising profit. Uh, it's been in growing the business. So you've said you want $140,000 to buy and fit out a truck. Yeah. Who's going to produce the food? Our kitchens will produce the food. So your kitchen is going to produce the food, yeah. not our kitchen. No. And but so it's... therefore, are you going to be charging this new business? Yes. Yes. Uh, so this new business will be dependent on the success of dinner ladies. Which we modestly think is a confident <laughs> bet. I, I, I'm ready to make a decision. From my point of view, I hope someone watching this show reaches down and, and mentors you and grabs you because I think you're an asset worth doing that with and spending time and money with. That person isn't me for a whole range of reasons to do with your business model. However, I wish you well, but for those reasons, I'm out. Okay. You know, I, uh, I think you're fantastic. What you've done is amazing and uh, the food space has risks and people like Janine have made it work terribly well. Um, it's been a graveyard for many other people and I think there is inherent risk that needs some specific expertise that I can't bring. So for that reason, I'll be a customer, but I'm out. I'm all about customer experience and what I hear from you is a deep, deep commitment to customer experience and the taste and freshness of your product. What I am concerned about that it has to be you because until the founders can get out of the way of their business, they actually don't have a real business, they have a job. For that reason, I'm out. Do you know, I don't get it. You guys have done something that is actually very, very difficult. You've created a successful business and you've got a great reputation. Why don't you expand the current model instead of going down another path? You've actually got a fundamental problem with what you're proposing here. There is going to be a distraction. If we're all in the same game, then we work through the challenges for both of them to make sure they all work effectively. But if we have two different agendas, which we will have if you have this business and, and a bit of this business, it can't work. I feel that our interest would be in both of them being profitable and it would be well, in our interest. We roll them both together, offer them both to us, but there's only one solution around this and that is to actually put both businesses up for investment. That's the only way to prove you've actually got to focus on the group because you're selling us an investment in a subsidiary at this point in time. And that doesn't interest me at all. Your business is probably worth about 800,000 bucks. The entire show. So maybe frame a, an investment ask, including your entire business, and see how that goes. Catherine, Sophie. Yes. What you're hearing mm. loud and clear mm -hmm. is do you want to roll your whole business into this business offer strategy and rethink your case? Because I think that's what you're hearing from all yeah, of us pretty yeah. loud and clear. You're most welcome to take a few minutes. Okay. If you I think you probably need a little chatting time. So where should we go? Out no the way. door. OK. There is a certain attraction, isn't yes, there? Yes, there is. So should we do it? For what? 
I don't know. <laughs> We're just making this up now. Because uh, well, he uh, said 800,000. I think that's low uh, value too, on our too. business. So let's go. So it's 20 percent. So let's double it. 1.5 million, let's say, for example, and give them a third of that, which is 500,000. Half a million, and they can have a one third share of dinner ladies. Okay. They've got to roll it in. They have to. They have to totally roll it in. Totally deal breaker. Of course uh, it is. It's just it not. Work. It's not functional. Okay. How is the board well, meeting? Well, honestly, it feels like a bit we're coming in here offering you one of our children to eat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, no. Well, our shark. We do not eat children, I promise. <laughs> We never came up with that idea because really uh, we didn't think that we needed the help. That's why we didn't come offering you a part of Dinner Ladies because it's a hard thing to offer some but of that. But we, we have been thinking about how to expand into different markets. We don't just want to be in Sydney. And we had been thinking about sort of quite small ways of doing it. But if we were actually to launch in, for example, first Melbourne, it would need to be with quite a bang and that would be an expensive bang, um, which was why we sort of had shied away from it. So taking your value of 800000 which we think low, and we'll double it, because that's what we think is worth, because we've got a great brand and a great value. And great growth. And great, great growth. So how much capital are you asking for, then? Well, we think if we offer you a third of dinner ladies for 500000 So the new offer is 500000 for 33% of business. the total business. Yes. I, I, I think that knowing the rules of this game is that you've actually got to get that investment or you don't get... No, 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 not this one. The original quote was oh, 140. Oh, so 140. Yeah. So we can go we can anywhere between 140 and 500 oh, okay, you can right. play. Real good. What is the new strategy? What are you going to spend it on? Um, I think, yeah, launching in Melbourne would be um, great. I'm from so Melbourne would, originally, so, so I know be, the would be to, to establish some form of kitchen in Melbourne and, and yes. one or two trucks to and start with and stuff. And, yeah, okay. someone with a van. And... I keep coming back on my head to the fact that I think that you're now flying by the seat of your pants for this strategy. I think that there's no plan to spend any money that you may be offered. And I can't get past the fact that at the moment, for me, there's an undercooked strategy here. I'd, I'd love to make an offer. It would be around the 800K. You're after half a million dollars. And if I'm going to get you to 500,000 bucks on an 800K valuation, we're not going to be friends. I'll get off the fence and I'll say I'm out. Okay. The $1.6 million as a valuation is actually quite um, generous. In actual fact, the valuation that I came to was 1.25, which is a simple calculation yeah. of profit times a number. If and when we come into business together, I take on all the debt of the business as mm. well. So how business is worth is, is a number, yep. 1.6 or 1.25, less debt because the debt is a real thing that I am now on the hook for. So my offer is actually based on that. Keep in mind that I truly believe that my dollars are more valuable dollars mm. than other sharks purely because I'm in this game. Yep. You guys bring the successful business, I bring an infrastructure mm. and 14 years of doing exactly the same mistakes that you guys yep. will be doing in the future, yep. right? Yep. So my offer to you is $216,000 for 33%. OK. Catherine and Sophie wanted $140,000 to help them spin a new concept off the back of their successful dinner ladies business. Roll them both together. Offer them both to us. There's only one solution around this and that is to actually put both businesses up for investment. They've now revised the deal, offering a third of the existing business for $500,000. Janine's offered $216,000. It's more than they originally asked for, so under the rules of Shark Tank, they can accept Janine's offer. Keep in mind that I truly believe that my dollars are more valuable dollars mm. than other sharks purely because I'm in this game. Yep. 
So my offer to you is $216,000 for 33%. Okay. Well, thank you. Do you want to go away and think about it, or can you make a decision here? Uh, I think we've no, I, I mean, let's just to, like, do you mind? Just, Is no, it okay? Knock okay out. Great. But it's That's giving up a third a, of our business. Not but that much. Yeah, I know. I know. It's not that much. Not enough uh, to get going in Melbourne, for example. No, not enough to get going in Melbourne. It's 650k Val. Yeah, but that's because it got 150 debt. Mm -hmm. So it's one six. So you're starting million bucks off. Yeah, basically. so it's 1.6 million less than their debt. If they had no debt, I'd be giving it to 1.6. But I'm taking on that debt. She's saying her dollars are worth more than there, so that's why she's knocked it down a bit. But she's going to think we're a pair of pussies if we go and say, oh, okay. So maybe we, should know. we go? <laughs> I don't know. We're allowed to. Are we allowed to negotiate? I don't know. Because we want more money. What's the debt? The debt's 950000 But haven't they got a corresponding asset? That's not, that's a balance sheet. We're talking value, like... The asset's example, being used to generate the profit, right? So that's that's where that comes in. So correct. it's already been accounted for. So it's already allowed for. So let's go back in and say 400000 for a third yeah. in the business, yeah. and that should get us going yeah. in Melbourne with a bit yeah. of luck and a fair yeah. wind. OK, and if that okay. fails... Then... We've had a good time. We have. <laughs> good. Welcome back, ladies. OK. Here's what we think. We would love to go into business with you because we think you are absolutely exactly what we need. Um, but we absolutely don't want to undersell our business. We think it's a very valuable business with enormous growth and we think one day it could have a big impact on whoever's involved. So we think it's fair that you pay 400000 for a one-third equity share of dinner ladies. The risk associated with this business going forward, like any business, is actually high. It's not a guarantee that we're going to work in, in Melbourne. So what I believe I've given to you allows for the risks associated with it going forward, the expertise I give to you going forward, and the ability for us to actually really take this dream of yours into something quite big. So for those reasons, I'm not moving. <gasps> OK. OK. Look, I think... I'm um, speaking for both of us, hopefully we'd both say the same thing. While we would absolutely love to work with you and love your input, it's that sum wouldn't actually be enough to get us to make that next step to Melbourne. I know, or... but what she's saying is the expertise. Oh, so I'm not speaking Look, for oh, both of us. Oh, no, <laughs> I'm speaking for one of us. There is a question on the table which is just about what if the business needs more cash to expand. I think I'm hearing that mm. question. Look, yes. if the business is solid, it's got the cash flow, we should be able to go to the bank. Yeah. Yeah. And I would imagine it would be easier with... Um... You have a new partner. A new partner with a third yeah. of the equity, yes. Yeah. We'll do it. Hey. Hey. Good. Hey. Okay. Okay. Oh, oh, my goodness. All right. Well done. Thanks, ladies. Well done. Thanks, All right. Thank well you. done, ladies. So you feel good about that deal? That, I'll have a lot of fun. They're, they're fantastic. Great they're energy. Oh my God. They just need guidance and direction. That's yeah. all they need. I think we've got a great result. I really, I think we have got a great result. I amazing, think, uh, amazing. Actually, yeah. yeah. It's yeah. not. It's not about the dollars. It's about hooking up with the right person, and that was exactly what we came on here for. First into the tank, a young couple who've given up their corporate careers and gone back to the Stone Age. <laughs> My name's Marlies. And I'm Jai. We live in Cairns and we love the outdoor lifestyle, so the beach, the rainforest, spending time with the family. We've got two sons, Troy is four and Zach just turned one. Our inspiration behind the business is Troy. He was born in, with a dairy intolerance. Through Troy's health issues, we discovered health and wellness. We were so passionate about it and we wanted to share it with as many people as we possibly could. Entering into the unknown is absolutely a risk, but the outcome could be profound.
Hello Sharks, my name is Jai Hobbs and with me is my wife and business partner Marlies. Together we are the founders of Paleo Cafe and we are seeking a minimum investment of $750,000 for a 10% equity share in the business. Paleo Cafe is a revolutionary health food store and cafe franchise business, which is based on the most logical philosophy for optimal health, the paleo lifestyle. Put simply, paleo is just eating real food that nourishes your body and avoiding processed foods that can be harmful to your health. We discovered paleo after a traumatic experience with our first son's health. Troy was born with a dairy intolerance. He screamed in agony and starvation for the first five and a half months of his life. I have a dairy intolerance like my son. If I don't eat this way, um, I suffer from serious skin issues, digestion problems, and I also have Hashimoto's, which is an autoimmune disease. After discovering paleo, the health of our entire family was transformed. Troy started thriving, Jai and I lost weight, my skin and digestion problems resolved, and we had more energy. Naturally, we wanted to share the benefits of the paleo lifestyle with as many people as we could. We opened the flagship cafe in Cairns in October 2012, and we now have 12 cafes throughout Australia and the first location opening in New Zealand in the coming months. In February 2014, we released our best-selling paleo cafe lifestyle and cookbook. And this year, we signed on Pete Evans as our consultant chef and brand ambassador for the next three years. So to showcase some of our product, we made some food for you here today we'd like you to try. One of Pete's recipes, um, which is butter chicken with some cauliflower rice and some naan bread. Yeah. Bring that on. I better start with a Queenslander. Looks good. I like. Cheers, thanks. I love the rice. Cauliflower. Is that cauliflower, is it? Yeah. Yeah. You bug it. Tastes good. It is good. Yeah, you know. Marley's and Joy, good to see you. Um, just trying to work out, it's a big, big number. Uh, 7.5 million valuation mm -hmm. for your company, 10% share. Mm -hmm. Walk me through the numbers. Yeah, sure. So, um, group turnover in the last 12 months was 13.5 million, um, so all of the cafes. Wow, fantastic. For head office of the franchise or business, gross revenue in the last 12 months was 875. Um, net was, was 300. That's a really good margin, right? How are your same store sales yes. year on year going? So from last year to this year, we're down. What percentage? 9%. Uh, Jai, I, I, that does disturb me, hearing your same store sales yep. have gone backwards 9%. What are we blaming here? What I think we're blaming is, is partly us and our management and our direction. We tried to drill down so much on operations and efficiencies and we lost focus of the product. What are you doing for those franchisees now to get some, some growth back in their cafes? We went and got, got some help and established some people around us and brought on our, our general manager that's got that experience. A big part of what we did was Pete. He's got three, three extra chefs in his team and they are a constant source of support for our franchisees and their chefs. Right. Right, OK. Do you have much debt in the business? No debt in the business. There's so many good things about you. I mean, I could really work with you too. You've taken your hits with a bit of humility and you've accepted that you, know, you didn't get everything right. You've talked about that in such a rational way. Yeah. I'm not mad about your business, don't get me wrong. It's a business, I could go yeah. either way. I can see your model will work. But the valuation just drives me to a corner yeah. where I say, I'd want probably 40 or 50% of your business and you're gonna tell me to get stuffed. So good luck to you. Thank but you. But for those reasons, I'm out. Thank you. Thank you. So $750,000. Yes. What's that going to do to the business? What are you going to spend it on and what, what difference it's going to make? Yeah, yeah, great question. Opportunity for us is a big thing. We believe the timing in the market is now, which is why we're here. We'd like to bolster our systems in-house. So bolster our systems for franchise support, make sure that the, the staff on the ground are, are doing things the Paleo Cafe way and giving our customers a great experience. 
We're looking to roll out our ready-made meal production. We're currently doing between about two and a half and 3,000 ready-made meals through our group um, a week. The problem is the chefs in the kitchens can't keep up. So we, we've spoken to a, a centralised supplier that can centrally produce these things with a 35-day shelf life, brand new state-of-the-art facility. Um, so we see that as a massive opportunity in our business at the moment. Um, I, I absolutely love your branding, love your positioning. I would love to produce a range of paleo gift boxes with you and I would love to promote it throughout my customer base because I do believe in that. Uh, it's just not an investment for me. I'm out. Thank you. Um, the biggest thing bothering me is the evaluation is huge. I think you're asking a big number. For that reason, I'm out. You're at a, a really interesting time in your life cycle. You need more infrastructure to grow, but you haven't got the, the revenue really to be able to afford that growth. The valuation is, is really high. And so with that in mind, I will make you an offer. I'm prepared to, to give you what you've asked for, which is 750,000, but I'll need 38% for it. Marlies and Jai Hobbs want $750,000 for a 10% stake of their food franchise, Paleo Cafe. Janine is keen for a piece of the paleo pie, but not at the current valuation of $7.5 million. I'm prepared to, to give you what you've asked for, which is $750,000, but I'll need 38% for it. So the value that I'm putting onto it is full value of what the market offers. I mean, you only have to look on the public listed market to see what food, food businesses are going for. Yep. But it's also coming with a juggernaut of systems and processes that you will need. Oh, look, I, I think you've been low-balled there. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I do. I, the thing is, Mate, if you think it's so cheap, then make an offer. If it needs further cash in the future, you're going to basically disenfranchise your entrepreneurs, which I'm, I'm not that keen on. Um, but I also have trouble making the, the equation work because mm. it, it, is, it is quite a big ask. I hate Janine's offer. It's probably, it is the only one on the table. I am out. Uh, all the best and uh, please try do something to get a better deal out of it. That's terrible. It's only because Steve doesn't know what's involved. I know exactly the stage you're at, and we will give you the foundation for you to, for you to take this business forward. Do you two need a moment to go out and talk about it? That'd for a second? Great. That'd be okay. great. Okay, go take a moment. Thank, Thank you. you. I think it's actually a fair offer. I think they're asking for too much hope in their valuation and not enough reality, and you've given them a reality check. What's your feeling? What's your gut? I'd be comfortable with um, seven, $750,000 for 30%. That's, I think, the maximum that we yep. should go to. They've only got two choices. They take debt and struggle and grow slower, or they go with Janine, take the equity and the smarts, and they'll get to a destination faster. Joe Malley, you came in here asking for 750,000 for 10% of your business. Janine has offered you 750,000 for 38%. Look, we've spoken about it and it's, it is a lot lower than what we came in here for. However, based on what you can bring to the table, um, we'd like to do a deal. However, we'd like to do a deal for 750 for 25%. 
So we have a counter offer of 750,000 for 25%. The numbers that I did actually, I didn't just pull, pull it out of the hat. The value that I bring is cash, but more importantly is experience. I bring an infrastructure of you know, hundreds of people. So I think my offer is actually very fair and I'm not moving. Don't walk away from this deal. Grow your business faster. I don't want to walk away from the deal, but there's a lot of sweat equity, there's a lot of there our is. money, there's a lot that's gone into it. it. Is our baby. I can help you grow this business to a you know, multi-million dollar business, and, and you know it. What I've offered is worth it. Would you agree to 35%? Congratulations. Well done. Oh, I think there's going to be tears in the tank. <laughs> Thank you. Alice, well done. I think. Congratulations. Well You're done. Wife, You're you. amazing. You did a really good job. Thanks, mate. Thank you. Yeah. Well, thanks. Good luck, Tim. You did a great good job. Decision. Well done. Thanks. Good luck. Thanks, guys. Congratulations. Thank God they made the right decision. Oh, no, well seriously. Done. High five on that. You got a deal? How's it feel? Yeah, really good. Really good. It was it was as intense as what we thought it was going to be, um, but really happy with the result. The experience she brings and the knowledge and the resources is fantastic. Next into the tank, a nutritionist who's followed her gut instinct to build an online health program. Hi everyone, Hi. my name's Lee Holmes and I'm the founder of Supercharged Food. I'm looking for $200,000 for 20% of my business. Supercharged Food started about five years ago after a struggle that I had with my own health. I woke up one day and I literally could not get out of bed. I had hives covering my whole body. My hair was falling out in clumps around me. I went through what I found to be a very complex medical system. Doctor to doctor, scan to scan, more clumps of hair, and I was put on a concoction of drugs, immunosuppressants, anti-inflammatory steroids that blew me up like the Michelin man. From there, I looked to food for answers. I created recipes and I put them up on my blog, Supercharged Food. The blog became really popular. Everyone loved the delicious recipes and I wrote my very first book, Eat Your Way to Good Health. And it became an international number one bestseller. Mm. I've since written four best-selling books. One of the main new parts of my supercharged food website is my online four-week Heal Your Gut program. It's based on my latest book, Heal Your Gut. It's put together with a team of experts. People do the program online, they get recipes in their inbox, and the testimonials have been so outstanding and fantastic. We've also got some supercharged food. Would you like to give it a try? Sure. Absolutely. So, Lee, that was $200,000 for 20%. Yes. So you're valuing your business at $1 million. Yes, that's correct. Thank you. So that's the mint choc chip smoothie that you're having, Naomi. Looks fantastic. It's dairy-free, sugar-free, wheat-free, gluten-free, everything free, as my daughter would say. <laughs> so, yeah, what am I eating? That is a vanilla custard with gelatin, which is really good for the gut. Right. What am I left with? <laughs> you're left with a beautiful <laughs> salmon chowder, I think, and there's also some pesto and some beautiful lemony herb crackers. The crack of the pesto. This is yummy. So what is your business? So the business is my online website, the digital platform. I have an online store. It's my program, my four-week program, as well as subsequent programs that I'm putting together. There's a two-day maintenance program, and it's also the e-books. Can you just run me through your income streams and the revenues you get from each? So my books, um, I've sold 120,000 units, so I get income from them, but the books are not included because I already have a contract with my publisher. 
but what is included is my program, subsequent programs, the products, the store, the online store. The online store has sold $65,000 worth of products in the last 12 months. And the program has made about $94,800. I really like your business model. I think it's fantastic. Thank you. The thing is, though, it is all about you. It's your reputation. I think you've done an amazing job on selling 120,000 books, which build your audience. But the challenge for us is that it is all about you. So had you thought about that? I have thought about that. The great thing about it is we've, we've got the digital platform, we've got the audience. You can run weight loss programs through it. You can run all different programs through it. You've got it there. It's ready to go. It's an amazing structure. Could you train someone else to run those programs? Oh, yes. Yeah, definitely. You can get a community manager. I'm just the face. G'day, you You haven't said much. I'm Hi. Steve. How you doing? Steve. Um, where are you from? I'm from England originally. And... Yesterday, where were you from? Oh, Bondi. Bondi. No, Sydney. No worries. <laughs> Um, I don't believe the whole, the whole superfood thing and stuff just drives me insane. I think that uh, my, my first reaction is, can I please have some bacon with it? <laughs> so um, I'm not a natural for this, uh, this segment. So I'll, I'll bow out. Thank OK, thank you. Steve's out, four of us in. My concern is you've just excluded probably the best part of your business, which are your books. I, I recognise your books. Um, I'm out. Thank you. Your business is very bankable. You've got cash flow, you're, you're the brand. Frankly, you are the unrepeatable miracle of your business, which is a risk from an investment point of view. I wish you well. I'm out. Look, I'll, I've got to be creative in my deal to be able to do a deal because it's it's the valuation is, is very difficult to get to. Yeah. So the offer I've got for you is 200,000. I'm splitting it in half. So the first 100,000 will be repaid to me uh, by $10 every time someone comes in and does a program. And the reason there's no interest on it is because it's paid within 24 months. So it's basically interest free. Yeah. Okay. A and the other 100,000 I will uh, buy as equity. So I'll buy shares, full fully shares but I want 35% of the business. <laughs> Thank you. I'm gonna make you an offer. But I actually think you need a business partner. I think you need somebody who's gonna run your operation for you. Mm. So I'm prepared to put a business manager into your business. Mm -hmm. Are you going to fund it? Yeah, who's funding that? It, it has to be funded by the business. A, a reasonable salary, not a big salary, but usually that is. Grand. So you're prepared to have her pay for your business manager? But she'll provide no, the expertise. Look, no, it's okay. Somebody... It's pretty generous. That's okay. I, I think this corner need, is right. She needs a business partner. That corner is a loan shark. No, she doesn't. How's it a loan shark? It's $100,000 interest free. There's no loan sharking at all. They're not even letting me give you an offer. They're so selfish, aren't they? It's all about them. We're here for them. No, no, they. we're, we're... It's all about them. You pay for my business manager, but it's all about them. Oh, please, Naomi. Actions speak louder than words, mate. Lee, I want 50% of your business for 200,000. Oh. But you get a business manager. OK. OK, what are you going to do? Thank you, Naomi, so much for your offer. Because it's 50%, I feel like I, you know, it's half of my company. Um, so I'm a bit overwhelmed by that. Janine, 
You are the biggest inspiration to me. I love your story. I love your journey. I love what you've done. I love your business acumen. I love your attention to detail and everything about you. And I'd be honoured to work with you. Whoa, that's nice. Well done. Thank you. Well done. Have a lot of fun. Well done. Congratulations. Congratulations. You're already a brand, so now you've got to build She's it. a great business partner. Well yeah. done. Thank you, Lee. We'll see you out there. Oh, Lee, was there anything you didn't like about her? No. Oh, OK, <laughs> just checking. <laughs> you haven't met her yet. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> I, w I want someone to say that about me once. Just <laughs> once. So what are you looking forward to the most? We're working with Janine and getting to know her a little bit better and taking the business to the next level. How lucky am I? First into the tank tonight, a stonemason who wants a shark to help him build an empire. Hi sharks, my name's Joel Norford, founder of Pentablock. And I'm here today requesting a $350,000 investment for 10% equity of my company, Pentablock. Pentablock is a unique interlocking construction block process, which features a patented, no mortar, simple, easy and considerably time-saving construction process. Pentablock can be used in all applications in the commercial, civil and residential construction industries, such as retaining walls, feature walls, structural load-bearing walls, fences, columns, pillars, swimming pools, basically anywhere where traditional masonry, block and brick construction and alternate methods are being used. Pentablock provides many advantages over these methods. A stonemason would do on average about one and a half to two square metres a day. Mm -hmm. One of my guys can do 50 square metres per day. We're stronger, we're faster and we're cheaper. They're the fundamental points of our system. So right now I'm going to get my two boys, Brenton and Jake, to do a demonstration for you. And I'm going to get a brochure to give you guys so you can have a little look at that while they're doing the build. OK, Joel, well, that was 350,000 big ones. Yes. For 10%. So you're valuing your company at a modest $3.5 million. That's correct. Just checking. Just checking. Seems like a lot. So simply, it's a, just a tongue and groove system which is, we call the tongue groove, the top section of the block, and then the groove on the bottom, and they simply stack together like that. So the material is the block, it's not cladded. It's the material's not the cladded block. We construct the block first. This is the first process of our manufacturing. We build a block like this. Yes. And then we laminate a beautiful, timeless natural stone onto the block. Or anything. Or anything, exactly. So we're providing a one very quick and simple process just like that. So we're eliminating a substantial amount of the labour. So you'd fill those up with cement? Of course. So it's freestanding now. So anything over three blocks high, which is somewhere around here, you're forced. And we like to hear that people core fill it with concrete because it lasts forever. But your product is aimed at traditional builders just to speed it up, cheaper, faster. Exactly. With structural walling, we've actually got 25% more bearing capacity. So we're 25% stronger than traditional blocks and bricks. Joel, I'm a serial renovator and builder, so I have seen nearly every single scenario of stone and mason and cladding and non-cladding. The thing I'm confused about is if I wanted a cream look or a look that you didn't supply mm -hmm. the stone cladding, yes. uh, how do I get that? Well, we encourage clients to specify a material, and in that case, we will then laminate the material onto this block system for you and then you would buy the product from us and get you yourself could do it or you could employ some tradespeople to, to lay the product for you. Uh, you've been in business two years. Can you go through some of the financials of your, uh, your operation? Um, our first financial year was last year and we recorded sales of $174,000, returning a profit of around $91,000, $92,000. This year we were projecting a sales of $750,000. And we're on target at this stage. We're currently sitting at about $320,000 with constant growth. So we're still only working in our local area. So, Joe, what do you think your business model looks like in two years? My intention is working my backyard first. So, this next 12 months, focus on Victoria. 
Victoria market's around 400 million. So I'd like to capture, you know, one or 2% of that in the next couple of years and then carry around Australia. So our third year projection is around 3 million. So that again, that uh, three times uh, growth, 300% growth. And then again, 9 million the following year. Now that's with enlarging uh, marketing uh, spends and obviously a little bit of help along the way. What are your competitors in this space, mate? We've got no competitors with a well, system. Well, you do. Surely. There's Besser, is it called Besser Blocks? Besser Blocks, yes. That's a product, yeah. They're sort of, aren't they hollow as well and... Correct, yes. It, so couldn't someone sort of do a similar thing with a Besser Block? Um, not really, because it's they've got to then get a bricklayer and lay mortar. Right, OK. Did you come up with this idea or did you buy it from somewhere else and you the distributor? I actually found an abandoned building in Vietnam that was there and with trees and stuff going over it. Seen the, this and I, the next year I went back for more business and then I was like, there's nothing going here. I got a block, seen what it was. I was like, I was going to do something about this. Um, patented it and basically claimed it. Did you just say that you saw this product in Vietnam? Yes. In an abandoned factory? Yes. And then you patented it? Yes. I'm, uh, I'm actually significantly concerned about your patents. Joel Norford is looking for a solid foundation for his building block business, Pentablock. But our sharks are concerned about the originality of the product. Did you just say that you saw this product in Vietnam? Yes. In an abandoned factory? Yes. And then you patented it? Yes. It was an abandoned factory, yes. Um, and I brought the stone application to it. So I th landscape stonemason. So your value add is that you saw something that was there, but you've also put the tiles and or you can put the granite. So you, you you took something that was there, but you added an idea to it. Correct. Yeah. yeah. And I've got a patent granted. Where? Australia. And I've got the paperwork in place for America. It's better. So, so Joel, I'll I'll, uh, I'll let you know how I'm feeling. I'm uh, I'm actually significantly concerned about your patents. So on that basis, I'll jump out. OK, no worries. Thank you. Thank you. Joel, I really love your product. It's, um, it's fabulous. I think you've done a really good job. Thank you. So I look forward to being a customer. Thank you. But I'm not going to be invested today. Thank you. Thank you. You don't really need cash. Um, I, I would go for the license to deal, but it's not really my kind of thing. I, I'm, I'm not as passionate about stone well, as you are, although I can admire it. No, no, I think you've done 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 well. Thank you. Uh, but you know, I think there's a few issues around scale. So as an investor, I'm out. But I wish you luck. Thank you. Thank you. And then there were just two. I, I am concerned about your valuation. I've taken your profit, which I've estimated at about 200k for this financial year we're in right now. Yes. And you're after 3.5 million, which is nearly 18, 19 times that. But I see your product has a great position in the marketplace. So, I, look, I, I'm, I'm sitting at 350k for 33%. I think that's not valuing the, the, the licensing potential, the, the global potential. All right, so what's your counter offer to them? Well, my limit today was 20% of my company. Look, I'm going to put an offer to you, um, which I think would work for the valuation of where the business is now. Because it's all very well saying you're going to triple the business every two years, which is, is fanciful. Right, it, 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 it really unlikely happens, can happen, but particularly in this industry, really highly unlikely. I'll give you $350,000 split into $150,000 in equity. 
for how much? 17%. 17%. And $200,000, we'll call it a loan, but it'll be paid off in two years. So, Joel, what's on offer from Janine here is $150,000 cash for 17% equity and then a $200,000 loan. Or you can do $350,000 for 33% with Glenn. So, commercial terms of loan over two years. Not yep. three, it has to be two years. Look, the thing is, if, if we've got great growth, I'm not mm -hmm. going to be going, right, OK, where's my return? But there has to be some sort of, like any business, it has to have a capacity to be able to pay its loans. Yes, yes, of course. But I'm, I'm going to be a partner in the business. 17. Well, that's much more attractive. That's under my 20%. Well, I'd like to welcome to Pentablock. Yeah, well done. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Is that like I've, I've been rejected? Well done, mate. Thank you. And yeah. I'd, I'd like to hear from you. I'm in the States. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank Good you. luck. Sorry, mate. Great. That's all right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Joel. Thank you. Well done. He's going to get to five or six million very quickly. It is a great product. You're going to get your money back. Yeah, That's I a good so. deal. <sighs> <sighs> I'm getting tingles in the back of my neck. <laughs> Next up in the tank are three music-loving mates from Perth who think they've discovered an untapped market for guitar players around the world. Hi, I'm David. I'm Mike. I'm Tony. And we have a product that we believe every musician is going to want. I've been working in the music industry for about 18 years, which is yeah. where I met Tony. He's been doing it for about the same. This one goes out to the bar staff and the hot security guard. We love gigging. It's like our air that we breathe. That's who we are. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. The things that we're addressing have never been tackled before. It's almost so simple that you'd wonder why. It's like, you know, but we've literally that just... That kind of moment. Yeah. I think that's going to be the moment. We're pretty much going shark hunting. Yeah. <laughs> Is that called fishing? This is amazing. This is something that 1% of people in a population would probably ever get to experience. For us, this is a big opportunity. This is it. This is going to change our lives. See what I see, baby, how could this be? Anything but easy, let it all go. If you believe what I believe, then improbability becomes possibility to let things grow. Cause life's too short and it's too fun. Look at all the good that we have done. So if you see what I see, baby, how could this be? Anything but easy, yeah, yeah, yeah. And just let them go. Well done. Hi, my name is Tony. I'm Mike. And I'm David. And, and we, we are, are the Guitar Strap company. company. Hey. We're seeking $100,000 for a 10% investment in our company. The products that our company designs are for musicians, designed by musicians to help solve problems that we face in the industry all the time. We've noticed a lot of commonplace problems found pretty much across the board. So whether it's a flat battery. Oh. Or you have to fix a broken string. Or sometimes you just need to find a business card. <laughs> <laughs> what you don't want to do is have to put this guitar down and go rummaging around somewhere in the backstage through all your cases looking for a needle in a haystack. And our aim with our patent pendant utility strap is to put more time in your musicians' hands, whether it be live on stage or at home in your bedroom. Your investment today will be used to take the utility strap to its final market ready stage, as well as help us raise cash to go to production for uh, expression of interest that we've received from a national retail distributor who has 200 stores across Australia and New Zealand for our premium range of leather, standard leather and entry level straps. Additionally, we're seeking mentorship from the Sharks to help take us, our product and our company to an international level. Okay. So you're looking for $100,000 for 10%. So you're valuing your business at $1 million. Yes, that's, that's right. correct. Just clarity on the what's on offer. It's not just the utility strap. It's the, the whole business, is that right? The whole business. Yeah. business. Okay, great. Yeah, we have a line of premium straps which we have developed for the retail market. Feel free to come and have a look. We'll walk you through what we have. Sure. 
Which one's a premium and which one's a standard? So this is a premium strap. Currently, most straps will not actually have a backing with a padded option. I'll take it to Andrew, who's the, the guitar player, and Naomi, actually. There are 13 different backing stitching options. Oh, These are just some of the backing options that we have. Ripper. Oh. So is this um, on the market now, the utility uh, strap? No, not at the moment. It, um, we haven't launched it just yet. <laughs> That's the other line we're producing. <laughs> <laughs> So what's the market size for guitar straps? Australian numbers, there's 220,000 guitars sold yearly. That's just acoustic guitars. And our market research is showing that each store is selling about 60 straps per week. So if we can get at least 10% of that market share, we'll be doing okay. What do these sell for? $59.95. And our premium, which is that one there, will cost us $13 landed Australian to produce. So we're still making good margins. But what we don't know is, will this product sell itself in store? So we have a, a strategy with our endorsees. For instance, at the moment, we've, we're in talks with Gene Simmons from Kiss. We have Adam Brand, a country music western star, who's one of our endorsees. We have uh, a band called Taxi Ride, which is an Australian band. And we're currently, there's about another 10 artists that we're negotiating making straps for. So you just send it to them, do they, and then they, and they produce it, promote it, and social, media, and social that... media, blast that as well. So um, the bit I'm confused about is a million dollar valuation. We haven't got sales yet. We don't have a barrier to entry. Really, we're a marketing machine. Yeah. Yeah, how did you come up with that number? The launch partners that we're talking to with the 200 stores, we're also talking to another major retailer in Australia. We took our products to them and they said, look, we can put it in our 200 stores with a order of 5,000 straps. How far along are you to a purchase order rather than in discussion? Uh, the person who has the distribution company is a personal friend of ours and he said, as soon as you've got the money in order to... Oh, we've got a chicken this. and egg here then, have we? You've got to get the money to get the order. Yeah. Using 5,000 straps as an example, walk me through what it's going to cost to fill that order and how much money are we going to make? So we're looking at uh, a cost, um, sorry, a cost of a profit, a profit, a final profit of $98,000 based off the, uh, sorry, $45,000 based off the uh, purchase price of, um, Sorry, I've lost my figures. It's really important you know your numbers. Musicians Mike, Tony and David have brought their line of custom guitar straps into the tank. Um, sorry, I've lost my figures. But their pitch has gone off key and now they need to get back in tune before they lose all the sharks. It's really important you know your numbers. What I've bumped into, a lot of businesses that create orders, once you're taking everything you need to, sell them below cost and you don't have a business. So let's get back to it. What's it costing to put them through? Well, there's a cost at $10 a strap. So yep. there's 50 grand. Yep. I'm moving now to Mike. What have you sold them for? What have we sold them for? $25. 25 oh, what have we sold them for? Sorry, I, I've done the sales. I'm just keeping this team working together. So we've now got 50 grand we've got to find off one of us. There's a $75,000 profit on that 50 grand. Why would they buy yours over what's currently available in the marketplace? How are you different? The end game for this company would be to be able for a customer to dial into the website, choose their colour, choose their stitching, choose their backing, choose their style, push print and receive in 30 days. Right. Um, I'll lead the way because I think I've made a decision. As an entrepreneur and investor, you didn't convince me today that you're at the point where I can invest in you and get my money back yet. Um, so I think there's a business there, but I'm out. Thank you, Thank you very Thank much. You. I see three guys with passion. And I have no doubt that you can sell a lot of these straps. What I don't see is whether those straps can sell themselves. I'm out. Thank you. Thank you very much. 
You look, guys, are very, they look very pretty. I'm, I'm not musical at all, I'm tone deaf. I actually don't <laughs> get it. But look, good luck, and uh, I'm out. Thanks very much, guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. So two more sharks in the mix. Who's going? I'll, I'll throw it out there. It's really an incredibly fledgling business that needs a lot of mentoring and a lot of support before we're going to get anywhere. It doesn't fit my profile of investments that I like, so I'm out. Um, look, for me, there is no evidence that you guys can even run a business. You're one year in. Look, it's a really nice idea. It's a great product. It's not competitive. The business is not going to make any money for a long time. Saying that, I'm going to do a deal. OK. I'm going to offer you 25% for 100000 It's two and a half times dilution. <laughs> so you guys are going to decide whether you need the cash that badly. You came in here looking for $100,000 for 10% and you have one offer from Janine for $100,000 for 25%. What are you going to do? Would you like to have a chat? May we please have a chat? Off Thanks, you go. Sir. Have you made an offer on every guitar business? <laughs> it's every time there's a guitar, I always make an offer. My husband's got five guitars. We're trying to capitalise on an opportunity right now, so okay. we have to ask ourselves, is that opportunity worth 25% of the company? I just have to tell you, I think you've got guts. Because anything like this with a small market, no barrier to entry, you could have a brilliant marketing plan. Okay, okay. let's do it. Hey. Well so, you've been out there in the tank, what did you think? We've uh, take, taken everything on 100%. We are quite well aware of our um, nucleus phase of our company and we're very green in this. We're very and grateful for your time and, and advice as well. We, we know that you guys are the leaders of what you do. So on that note... We'd definitely like to take you on. Yes. 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 Welcome to the family. Okay, well done. Thank you. We're very, very, very <laughs> happy. Yeah. yeah. Couldn't have turned out any other better other way. And we're actually after yeah. Janine, so Janine. Was, yeah. On the button. We got Janine. We got Janine. Oh, well, congratulations. Prove me wrong. If they actually deliver on what they say, they've got a real crack of actually getting it. I have to say, as a team, I think they will listen and take instructions. Yeah. So that's good for you. It is. It is right. Next into the tank, a former nurse and a financial consultant who are partners... Good luck. ..in every sense of the word. I'm Luke and I'm 30 years old. I'm Chrissy, I'm 27 and we're a couple from Melbourne. And we've got a business that the sharks are going to love. Luke, what's for breakfast? What can I make you? We actually met online um, and we've been dating for two years. Two and a half. Two and a half, two and a half, sorry. I actually made the first move. Chrissy made the first move. Yeah, I made the first move, yeah. What have you got on for today? Got to make some more meals. When we met, we bonded over something really bizarre and it's given birth to this amazing business. How's it going, babe? Yeah, how's it going? Good. Yeah, all good. We're actually the first business of our kind doing what we're doing in the whole world. We're doing a lot of really cool new things and we're doing it in a really cool new and different way. All right, guys, we have a green smoothie bowl and a Moroccan salad with chicken. Thank you. No worries at all. I really don't think I'd be able to do this business without Chrissy. I just don't think it would be possible. But to be perfectly honest, I don't think I could be the best person I could be without Chrissy. So, frankly, I just see her as a part of my life, not just a part of this business. There is no stopping us. We can take on the world and we want to be a global sensation. We actually started with an online store about six months into our relationship, so it was probably kind of early on. The labour of love, it's a product of who we are. It almost feels like it's a child that we have. This is our baby. This is our baby, exactly right. Hi Sharks, I'm Luke. And I'm Chrissy, and we're Foddies. We're seeking $100,000 for 10% of our business. 
food allergies and intolerances are on the rise. For those who don't know, low FODMAP is food that's suitable for people with a range of stomach issues, like fructose malabsorption, irritable bowel syndrome, and a few other conditions. Foddy's is a specialty food brand that produces a range of low FODMAP, gluten-free, and other allergy-friendly packaged products. We distribute delicious, easy to digest food, and we also own and operate a retail outlet and cafe in Melbourne. Domestically, the gluten-free market is worth $100 million. Now, the low FODMAP market is a little bit newer, so dollar figures don't exist just yet, but our vision is to be the largest specialty food brand in the world. So um, what you all have in front of you is our tomato relish with some corn chips to try. So that is uh, low FODMAP, so no onion, no garlic. It's gluten-free, it's also dairy-free. That's good for you, Steve. We've also got a blueberry and chia seed muffin. You've got our Thai green curry, which is low FODMAP, gluten-free and dairy-free. So I just need to get this terminology, low FODMAP. Low FODMAP or low FO. Low FO, so the MAP, M-A-P? Yes, yes. F-O-D-M-A-P. It's an acronym. Acronym, yeah. And what does it stand for? It stands for fermentable oligosaccharides, disaccharides, monosaccharides and polyols, which is why we call it FODMAP. <laughs> OK. Well, thank you very much, Luke. Well done. That was $100,000 for 10%, so you're valuing your company at around a million bucks. That's correct, yeah. Exactly a million dollars. Exactly. Nice round figure. That's terrific. And uh, it was Chrissy. Yes, correct. And are you two related in some way? No, we are partners. We're boyfriend and girlfriend right. partners. Right. OK. Glad so we're you're not partners. related. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Well, I, hope, I, I don't think you're, we are. You're not related, but you're having relations. I get it. That's, That's correct. That's OK. Yeah. So how long have you been in business? 14 months seriously. So we actually started with an online store last year. So who came up with the recipes? I do, so I do the food. Good job. And, and Luke does the business. And when I was diagnosed um, about seven years ago, is really when my passion started. So I started to make recipes, create new food. So what were you diagnosed with? So I have fructose malabsorption and lactose intolerance. So what does that mean? What are your symptoms for that? Uh, when I eat um, the wrong foods, um, I get severely bloated yep. um, and I have some um, not so Irregular nice... Irregular bowel movements. Yes. Right. Thank you. <laughs> the terminology Thank you. we use. The technical yeah. term. The yes. technical term. Yeah. Thank you for sharing. I tried all those meals. Yes. Uh, they're great. I, you know, if you hadn't told me they were low FODMAP uh, food, I, I would have just eaten them, so that was, that was good food. Thank you. Thank you. So tell us a little bit more about the financial side of the business. Sure. What does that look like? Yeah, so last financial year, in the nine months that we were seriously operational, we generated revenues of $210,000. Um, this coming financial year, we're projecting revenues of about $400,000. G'day, g'day, uh, Chrissy, Chrissy, Cr Chrissy and Luke, I'm Steve, g'day, how you going? Well, thank you. You're from Melbourne, obviously, That's aren't correct, you, right? Yes. Correct. Um, this is the first time I've heard of FODMAP. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to downplay the condition, and please don't take it that way, right? As these people here will also tell you, I'm, I'm not the biggest believer in, in health food causes, and I think they're a bunch of fad rot at the best of times. Yep. But um, are, are you trying to create a whole new category of food? Or does this category of food already exist? It exists at a smaller scale than what we're trying to build. We, we, see, we see lots of businesses. First non-low, minor FODMAP business ever. Yep. yep. But we've seen gluten-free before. What percentage of the population has a FODMAP issue? Just, just talk me through it, because I don't believe this exists as a category. So estimates range between one in five to one in three. Now, personally, oh, I think the one in three. So I'm sorry. Okay, let's just let's just let's just sanity check yep. a twenty to thirty-three percent number. Yep. Twenty to thirty-three percent of the people. That's more than bloody diabetes for crying out but loud. Steve, obesity levels are up to 50, 60 percent oh. in some parts of. Australia. Oh, I'm sorry. But so it'd be like, something's like, going wrong. It'd be like Walking Dead. You'd, you'd walk outside and there'd be low like FODMAP people walking around everywhere. Yeah, but quite helping with FODMAP is people sometimes don't even realise. That's what happened to me until I met Chrissy, and my irregular bowel movements were horrible. Yes. And I assumed that everyone's irregular bowel movements were horrible. All right, so, so I, I have an onion and 30 seconds later I start farting. If I have too many cherries, I get diarrhoea. Is, is there a cherry problem? I have an issue with certain foods. That is not, that is not a condition. It's probably called the human condition, to be honest, right? On that basis, I, I won't be investing. I don't believe in it. I'm out. Chrissy and Luke are pitching their low FODMAP specialty food brand and cafe, Foddies. For those who don't know, low FODMAP is food that's suitable for people with a range of stomach issues, like fructose malabsorption, irritable bowel syndrome, and a few other conditions. We distribute delicious, easy to digest food, and we also own and operate a retail outlet and cafe in Melbourne. 
But Steve is a non-believer. This is the first time I've heard of FODMAP. I don't believe this exists as a category. Yeah, but quite helping with FODMAP is people sometimes don't even realise it. That's what happened to me until I met Chrissy, and my irregular bowel movements were horrible. Yes. And I assumed that everyone's irregular bowel movements were horrible. If I have too many cherries, I get diarrhoea. Is, is there a cherry problem? I have an issue with certain foods. That is not, that is not a condition. It's probably called the human condition, to be honest, right? On that basis, I, I won't be investing. I don't believe in it. I'm out. Thank you for your time, Steve. So, so I'm trying to understand, you're actually pitching two businesses. You, you've got your cafe and you've got your Foddy branded supermarket style yeah, foods here. That's correct. Break the business down for me. So you've got a cafe. What does that turn over at the cafe? Uh, so this financial year, it's 80% of the revenue we've generated to date, which is $130,000. Explain the other parts of your business then. Sure. So the 80% is the cafe. 10% of the business this financial year um, are the ready-made meals. Um, and the remaining 10%, that is the wholesale that we're selling out of the store. $130,000 in a cafe, in any cafe, is not a good result. It's not like a, oh my God. Agreed, and that, but that's the, the immediate scalability is the wholesale business, which is why that's what we're focusing. We're not focusing on the retail and cafe store because the wholesale and production business is scalable quickly and more cost effectively. Now, the cafe and retail outlet serves a really important role in the business because if I can just quickly grab sure. something, when we have a new product, we put it in a jar, we put it on the shelf, we give it two to three months, and if it sells, we keep it. Uh, which means that we have a huge competitive advantage over not just our direct competitors, but even our larger competitors. But our focus is on wholesale and food production because it's scalable quickly. Yep. And then once we're established, we then want to roll out an international franchise. So you're using your cafe as a, a, a sampling exercise. Effectively, and that's that's what we want it to be. I like this. <laughs> Good. We do too. Minimal viable product. Test it. You've got customers who are giving you feedback. Yep. Because they either buy it or they don't. Yep, exactly before right. Before you scale. Where are we seeing the next three or four years go for us? Well, we've just signed on a distributor. Actually, we got the email this morning uh, saying they're going to be putting us in front of 450 stores in Victoria and New South Wales, uh, which is really exciting. And what about your recipes? They're not. I mean, they're your recipes, yes. but by definition, others could copy them. Yeah, absolutely. So that is a bit of a barrier. But look, that applies to any food business. No, it, I does, mean, it does, but I'm, I'm just thinking through the cost of building sure. a brand. You are sure. trying to build a brand in a niche market. You know, it's tricky because, A, you don't think you're looking for enough money. You need a lot more money to build a brand than 100000 So you're going to try and do this incrementally, and then you're going to need That's to raise right. more money, and then you're going to need to raise a lot more money. So I'm mulling that over. I do want to thank you very much for educating me. <laughs> sure. And I am absolutely of the mind that you are inspirational to a whole bunch of people for coming here and having a go and also inspirational in the, in the diet you're putting together. Thank you. But this is really niche and, and for me, I'm, I, I can't see an investment. Unfortunately, I'm out. Sure. Thank you for thank your time. You. So two sharks are out, three of us are left. Naomi, where are you? I'd never heard of FODMAP before, but guess that's because I'm not from Melbourne, so oops. I'm really glad that you've got into 450 retailers. I think you'll do fabulously well. You'll carve out a great business for yourself, but it's not an investment for me. So for that reason, I'm out. Sure, thank you thank for your you. time, Naomi. Thanks, Naomi. Cheers. I have two golden rules in investing. You know, my, my money is a bit like soldiers. I like them to come back. You've probably heard that before. But I mean, generally, I, I can't get away from these two issues barriers to entry and scalability. And for that reason, I'm out. Sure, thank you for thank your you. time. Thanks for your time. Um. I am teetering on the, on the top. I am going, oh, I can sort of see where the cafe can go. I can see the wholesale. I'm just, I just aren't, con the numbers haven't convinced me. You guys have convinced me. Yep. The numbers at this point yep. haven't convinced me. I'm sorry, I'm out. Ooh. Is there anything we can do to change your mind? I'll come back next year. Yes, come back next year with more traction. Yep. Good luck to you. Good luck. Thank you for Thank your time. Don't Keep give going. up. Keep it's going. early days. You'll get there. Good luck. Is there anything else to say? 
Sorry, I will say as well, we are entering a stronger period. Like last year, <laughs> the, the summer months and the autumn months were our best period. So I think that it will be growing quite significantly. You don't know no, you're fantastic. <laughs> I think the numbers just aren't solid enough for me. Definitely no. You've got time. <laughs> Did you ever sell real estate? No. One of those auctions where is this the last bid? Are you absolutely sure? It is a big opportunity. Domestically, the gluten-free market is worth $100 million. Uh, people didn't really know anything about gluten-free 15 years ago. That's where we are with low FODMAP today. We know that at least 100 people in the US would buy our product, because 100 people in the US have said to us, we need your product here. Someone came down from Norway, she couldn't speak English, it took her three days to find the shop, but she finally got there wow. and she loved it. Amazing. We, we want the help. You're made for this kind of thing. 40%, 100,000. Oh! Luke and Chrissy are seeking $100,000 for 10% of their low FODMAP business. I'm sorry, I'm out. All five sharks have bowed out. The numbers at this point haven't convinced me. Is there anything we can do to change your mind? Oh, come back next year. Yes, come back next year with more traction. But Luke isn't giving up. Someone came down from Norway, she couldn't speak English, it took her three days to find the shop, but she finally got there wow. and she loved it. Amazing. We, we want the help. You're made for this kind of thing. 40%, 100,000. Oh! Wait a sec, wait a sec. Wait a sec. You were after 10% you um, for 100,000. You've got no profit. There's no profit. There's a reason I was out. Um, what do, do you, you think so? Yeah, I'm happy. Yeah. Uh, Janine, I think we'd absolutely yep, love to partner with you. Oh, my goodness. We got a deal. Oh, <laughs> Janine, thank you very much. Thank right. you so much. Pleasure. Awesome. Thank you. Very excited. Thank you. Thank you. I very much appreciate thank it. You. Well thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well done. Thank you did you. a great job. Thank you. Seriously, that is the Thank right. You. That's the right move. Thank you. Congratulations, Danny. <laughs> well done. Good job. Uh, just one more thing, if I could. Oh, hang on. <gasps> oh. <laughs> Chrissy. <laughs> oh. Without this, without you, none of this would be possible. Uh, I can't even imagine a life without you. Uh, frankly, I don't want to. I want to spend the rest of my life with you, Chrissy. Oh my god. Oh. <laughs> That's a first. Oh my goodness. Will you marry me? <laughs> yes, of course. Oh, congratulations. Oh, I love you more. Look at it on. Amazing. Oh I think we have to have a shark hunt. Well done. Oh, that's great. Oh, that's that's great. Great. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Get the deal. Get the deal. Oh. That was harder than the pitch. Oh, oh, you just did yes. Yes. <laughs> Hey, congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you so, so that's really good. So now you do have a husband and wife team in the business. Oh, that's it. I'm out. Yay. Oh, they're kissing. Oh, they're kissing. Don't you love that? <laughs> What? Okay. Yeah, what? I'm so shocked. Oh, wow. That is fantastic. Oh, look, Naomi. Oh, yeah, Naomi that's cool. Simpson. <laughs> I'm such a romantic. Oh, I can't believe it. <laughs> Wow, wow, wow. Haven't you two got a lot to celebrate? Where do we start? Did you know that that was going to happen? It was so hard. You've got to show us the ring. Show us the ring. It's actually my mum's ring. It's your mum's ring? Without my mum, I wouldn't be the man I am today. And without Chrissy, I can't be the man I'm meant to be tomorrow. Stop it! I had no idea. I didn't even... It's not even... We're so focused on the business, I just didn't even... It was hard to keep it a surprise. <laughs> you know you have to invite Janine to the wedding now. Yeah, of no course. one else is invited. No, 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 none <laughs> no of them. None else, none of them. <laughs> First into the tank is an entrepreneur who, along with her business partner, believes she has found the answer to a growing problem. My co-founder and I, he's a bariatric surgeon. I'm a clinical dietitian. We've been working in the weight loss field for 13 years. I believe in the product and I just hope I can convince the sharks and get their interest. Hello sharks. 
Let me start by posing you a question. How many of your friends and family would like to lose five, maybe 10 kilos, maybe before a special occasion? What do they do? BeFit Food has taken the guesswork out of this. We offer seven day programs, breakfast, lunch, dinner and snacks for people needing rapid weight loss. I'm Kate Save, clinical dietitian, co-founder of BeFit Food, along with Dr. Jeffrey Draper, a bariatric surgeon. We're asking for $300,000 for 20%. BeFit Food is chef created and scientifically formulated for rapid weight loss and healthy eating. Our patients lose between three to 12 kilos in two weeks and they're not hungry. The science behind our diet stops their appetite. We believe that we can help millions of Australians lose weight, but more importantly, to help them keep this weight off. So Sharks, would you like to try some of our food? Love to. I'd love yes. to, Kate. Why not? So Kate, just confirming $300,000 for 20% of your company. Yes. Valuing your business at 1.5 million. That's correct. Okay. We've got a few different things here. We've got our barbecue lamb. That one? Yes. Thank We've you. got our curry pumpkin and chicken soup. I'll take the soup. And five different protein balls. That's a good soup. Oh, thank really you. Really good soup. Bring all that on. All of it has been prepared freshly It's really you. good. Really, really good. I've designed all the recipes myself. Thanks, Kate. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, Kate, tell us, how did this come about? Because I suspect it's something to do with bariatric surgery, which uh, I think is where you put a little binds around the stomach, isn't it? Sort of yeah, making, making the stomach smaller, in effect. That's right. What we found in patients was after they had the surgery, nobody had educated them about what to eat. And then we had people ask us, I guess, why couldn't they just do this diet without actually having surgery? You can keep the weight off and the appetite suppression comes from ketosis. By using a ketogenic diet that's a little bit lower in carbohydrate but really high in fibre and protein, you change the hormones. So the ones that stimulate appetite actually is suppressed. Is it for the obese person that needs bariatric surgery or is it the overweight person that just got to get back to something that's... Absolutely not just obese people. We're really targeting people that want that five to 10 kilos weight loss in two weeks. So people go on the, your website and they pick a plan, is that how they work? And then you deliver it? So it's seven day rapid weight loss program on the smaller meal, so they get breakfast, lunch, dinner, and their snack is $186.50 and $20 delivery. Our cost of goods on that, so the actual ingredients, the packaging, the labels, all of that is about 33% at our current volumes, but we know that at 300% of what we're currently producing, that'll come down to 23%. 23% on food is, um, is nearly impossible if you're giving them quality food. Uh, we work with a lot of food companies. We're getting some special deals through some of the food companies that we work with and a lot of health brands. So you don't have a program, just a normal general eating healthy program? We do, but it's not our main focus. We believe there's heaps of general healthy eating programs out there and that's where the competition is and we're the only uh, company that we believe in Australia is actually playing in the rapid weight loss field with real food. So are you nation nationwide at the moment? We're currently in Victoria and we are absolutely dying to get into the other states. We get inquiries every day and our biggest problem is logistics. So. We are here to seek help from people who have lots of expertise. So tell us about your sales to date. First year of trading was 77,000. This year to date, just 300,000. What's your business going to look like in three years' time? Our projections for three years are 2.8 million with a profit margin of 49%. Your business partner. Yes. I think it's time to meet Jeff. Okay, because can if we're I go and get him? Thinking about an investment, we want to see who's who. Absolutely. Okay, I'll get Jeff. Go and get Jeff. Thank you. This is really good. That's good. Yeah, for, for the 
I'm love a nutritional. It. Yeah. You all right there, Steve? You can get arrested for shoplifting, you know that. <laughs> Here they come. I've been busted with my hand in the cookie jar. <laughs> <laughs> She is a fabulous advocate of her product. Oh, yes. Oh, she's... my goodness, and she's smart. And the dress is pretty good, too. Oh, shut up. It's all right? Hey, Jeff. Hi, how are you? <laughs> Very well, thank you. Hello. So, I imagine a bariatric surgeon get paid a fair bit, to be honest. Uh, maybe that's just my misunderstanding in life. <laughs> maybe. So why do you need our cash? Why do we need your cash? In fact, you, you guys make you guys make it like bandits. Why do you need our cash? <laughs> <laughs> I, I think we're specialists in our field, and we're actually seeking your expertise. So Kate's come out. She's pitched a beautiful investment story. Give us your version of why we should invest in this in this business. BeFit Food has a huge potential, I believe, in helping Australians lose weight and keeping it off. I completely believe in the science and also in the product. So, Kate and Jeff, you're both professionals in your area. And what I believe you need is a business partner or a business manager, somebody who really understands food logistics. That's not going to be me. So for this investment, I'm out. Thank you for your advice, Naomi. Thank you. So, Kate and Jeff, I like what you're doing because you're, you're not competing against the Lean Cuisine or, or the Weight Watchers program, so I get the business model. The issue I have is that logistics and moving a food around the country is not where I feel comfortable. So, for that reason, I'm out. But I wish you the best of luck and I hope to see your product right across the landscape. It's important. Thank you very Thank you. much. You're clearly addressing a very important problem. Congratulations. And I buy the science. I think you've got a business model that can work for you. I think you'll make money. Uh, but at a 1.5 million valuation, to get to 3 million in sales in three years just doesn't excite me. So wish you luck. Thank you. The market needs it, but I'm out. Thank you. Thank you. You've heard from the three people that are out, and there's some very good reasons why they're out. Um, you have a massive job ahead of you, it's huge. But I love the science behind it and I love the fact that you are experts in your field and that gives you your barriers to entry. I really like the business. The valuation, I do not like. But I will make you an offer. Dave and Jeff Draper are in the Shark Tank, hoping to lock in a $300,000 investment for 20% of Be Fit Food. So far, Naomi, Glenn and Andrew are out. I will make you an offer. The valuation, I do not like. You've been around for 20 months, and so you're, you're definitely not worth one and a half million dollars. You just can't be, because you've, you've got so much more risk to, to come. I will give you $300,000, broken into $200,000 equity, $100,000 in loan, that we can work through later, for 33 and a third percent. So there'll be the three of us in it together. Thank you, Janine. So, uh, look, you've done fantastic well. Look, I've, I've had a hell of a weight loss journey over the years. So I am a huge believer in this working. You're exceptionally impressive and you're the clinical verification behind it, right, in some respects. So it's a, it's a bloody good business pairing. I'll make you an offer. Uh, 300K, 33 to 3rd percent. Steve's offered 300,000 for 33 per cent, Janine's offered 200,000 for 33 per cent, and then a loan of 100, which means there's going to be an arrangement where the business will have to pay that back. Yeah, OK. What you need is a business partner, someone who has that logistical side and the accounting side. 
but I actually, I'm buying you guys because I actually really love what you're doing. And if I can help get this out here, because it is a real problem, then I'd be very happy. Best to make sure you understand which, what each of the sharks bring. For example, I bring an operational team complete with a bit of finance and accounting and operations. Who do you want, Janine or Steve? Okay. Janine, we'd like to accept your offer. Oh, <laughs> oh, <will> you... <laughs> Never mind, mate. Well done. I still love you. I still love you. It's right. okay. Wow. Very good. Sorry, Steve. Thank, Thank you. Well done. Thank you. Good deal. Well done. That's a great deal. <laughs> We did it. We got a deal. Yes. We did. With Janine. Yes. Amazing. What made you go for Janine? We see a lot of synergy between our brand and Janine's brand. Yeah, Janine, I guess, it's everything that we really wanted. What Bloody well done, Janine. That was a really good deal. Yeah, it was no, a really I good deal. I'm very happy so. with that. Next into the tank is an entrepreneur from Victoria who is hoping the Sharks will award her business Best in Show. Hi, my name's Melanie. I'm 38 and I'm a professional dog groomer. My greatest passion in life is my dogs and, of course, dog grooming. My name's Corey, I'm Mel's husband. Well, this used to be my pool room. As you can see now, it's uh, converted <laughs> into a stock room for our business. Do I take better care of my dogs and Corey? Yes. <laughs> I've put my name onto my product because it's my reputation and I've got a really good reputation within the industry. We won best of breed today and I'm so proud of my little dash. Good boy. Oh my god. <laughs> Look at that dog. That dog is so cute. Oh my god. Do you want to get up? Even if you've got a red one. Aren't you cute? Come on, up here. So Steve, how many of the dogs love being with you? <laughs> <laughs> okay, you can sit there. Melanie, hi. Hi. <laughs> Melanie is my second, third cousin, fourth cousin, maybe fifth. I, I don't, don't know. know. <laughs> really? Yes. So I thought I'd just declare that. Oh. <laughs> so you didn't know she was coming on the show. There you go. No. Amazing. <laughs> I know. Hi, Sharks. My name's Melanie Newman. This is my husband, Corey, and my Bichon Dash. Today we're seeking $150,000 for 20% of our business. So we owned a professional dog grooming salon in Melbourne for 14 years. And during that time, we could never find a product that we're 100% comfortable with to recommend and use on our clients. I'm a professional dog groomer and I've travelled the world competing. As a dog groomer, my hands were constantly irritated from the chemicals within grooming products. So we created our own using plant-derived ingredients, sulphate-free, coconut base and completely uh, scented with essential oils. So we have four varieties of products. We have a, a shampoo, a conditioner, a cologne and a coat conditioning spray. We launched 18 months ago and we've been quite successful. We've, so far to date we've um, sold $168,000 worth of product in our first year with a $55,000 profit. Currently we have approximately 60 stockers stocking our retail range and we have approximately 80 groomers using our bulk five litre varieties, and it's growing weekly. Dog cologne. Just confirming you're looking for $150,000 for 20%, <laughs> and basically this is sort of toxic-free or organic dog shampoo. That's what yeah, we're talking about, is it? <laughs> yeah, it's all plant-derived ingredients. Plant-derived ingredients, yeah. OK. So there's competitions for, for comb and dogs? Yeah, scissoring, and hand yes. scissoring. Yeah. So I, I'm a hand scissorer, so... That's what I do. I travel the world competing. I recently got a first place in Belgium, grooming these dogs, Bichon Frises. OK, yep. amazing. Now, do you want to get down? What's, what's going on? So you guys have walked through an occasional big pet store that I might be associated with. <laughs> Such as 
Pat Barn. Thank you very much. <clears throat> There's only a certain amount of shelf space available. Why is this going to outsell everything else? Our products were designed in a grooming salon. So we we trialled and tested probably for uh, over I, a year. I reckon I've used most pet shampoos and a lot of companies do use harsh synthetic chemicals. So, so it annoys the, the skin of the dog at the end of the day? Yes, but our particular blends are very calming and soothing for the dog. So look, I've, I've got a um, Spoodle, Dexter, the head of security. Yeah. Big, tough boy that he is, but he's got very sensitive skin. And I hate to admit this on national television, but I've taken to using organic human products. Yeah. Um, and just a tiny touch. Do you want to give her a quick lecture on that? <laughs> well, but this is what we do, because I was seeing how irritated he was getting from the, from the pet products. I didn't know what to do. So what's wrong with using human organic the, products? The pH. Oh, the main, is, yeah. yeah. It strips out a lot of your oils and they actually makes it worse. But now you can use ours because ours are all human grade ingredients. Right, so you could eat it if you wanted. You can eat it, you could. Just check it. I've tried it. <laughs> okay. How long does it take you to make a batch and how big is that batch through this manufacturer? Our capacity is 40,000 litres per month. 40,000 litres. So yeah. how many bottles of this? 80,000. 80,000 bottles. Month. Right. So you can scale pretty quickly. Yeah, yeah. we can scale So what's 40,000 cost you and what do you sell them for? Uh, they retail for twenty nine ninety five. So this dog. Oh, uh, that's twenty four ninety five. The sprays. So that's about twenty five bucks average for yep. the bottle. Yeah, okay, right. And what, are you, what, are you, what what's the cost you to make? It costs us about six six ninety to make. So, sorry, what are you on track to do this year in terms of sales? Well, our forecast was two hundred and twenty thousand. It's not massive growth, is it? That's not massive. You're one sixty eight to two twenty. It's not. You're not shooting yeah, the lights out. Well, we're right? hoping for more. But we're, we're, try, we're trying we're try to do realistic. Yeah. Yeah. We sat down with our accountant and we wanted to set an achievable goal in the first year and. Sort of grow. Oh, but the count's going to the count's going to give you a gutless goal. What's, what's your goal? We think we could double that, so you can go for about three hundred and fifty ish. Yeah. Maybe not this year, but the year after. Melanie, I'm really glad that you have provided our community with this product. I think you've done a sterling job, a really sterling job. I will be a customer, but it's not an investment for me. Okay. I'm out. No problem. Thank you. <laughs> I like what you're trying to do and I, and I get the passion and I definitely see there's a problem and you've solved it. I, I wish you well, but I'm not the right partner for you. But I'm out. Okay. No, thanks. Hey, uh, hey uh, look, I've, I've really enjoyed the pitch, Melanie and Bory. I'm going to let you know where I'm at. Uh, one part of me is really happy you're getting some success. One part of me is really sad that such a thing called dog grooming cologne actually exists. Yeah. <laughs> look, I wish you all the best in your journey and, and good luck, but I'm out. Thank you so much. Thanks, Steve. Thanks Thank you. My big concern with you guys is you're about to scale up, which means you've got to add some, some uh, maturity to the business. Yeah. And, and that means costs. So real people on real wages, real rents. Yeah. And it's going to absolutely destroy any semblance of profit in this business for some yep. time. Yes. So look, I'm going to throw you an offer. And, and you know, I've looked at your numbers and going, OK, it's all about gross profit. What's going to drop out the bottom when we put real costs in there, like wages and rents? Yeah. And, and, um, you know, really, you don't have any profit, guys. So, look, my offer, based on the information you've provided, uh, is 150k for 50% of your company. <laughs> True to form. True to form. There you go. Mate, you've done the numbers. You've done the numbers. Bottom fee, mate. So, Steve's out, I'm out, Naomi's out. Janine, you got any counter? You've got a, um, you've got a really good business, and you. And what I like about it is that you've got the authenticity to make this a success. You've, you know, you live it and breathe it. But I have a rule that I don't uh, do business with family or friends. Yeah. Uh, a really big rule because yeah. that means that friends. If I do business with friends and I have in the past, they haven't been friends in the future. It's really sad. And also with family, I mean, I've had family not talk to me for three months for things. It's not fun. I understand completely. But you've only seen it three times in the last 15 but saying, years. But saying <laughs> that, I love your product. I would do you a deal, but I need Glenn. Yeah. I yeah. need Glenn for his expertise and his background and all of that. Yeah. Um, I'm based in Melbourne. Uh, yeah. And um, I think that I could actually really sort of assist, but I need him with his contacts and his know-how. So I will make you an offer, but I can't actually change the offer because I want to go in with Glenn. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I've got a lot of respect for Janine, but I don't need her. Hi. Dog groomer <laughs> Melanie is Janine's cousin. Really? And she's seeking $150,000 for a 20% share of her dog grooming products. Glenn threw her a bone. 150k for 50% of your company. <laughs> but cousin Janine quickly barked up. I would do you a deal, but I need Glenn. I've got a lot of respect for Janine. But I don't need her. You do need me in the sense of mentoring Mel and working with them on a daily basis with marketing and also really working on the infrastructure and being based in the same state. I think I can add a lot of value. See, I, I agree with that. If I could see you as an independent, I believe that there is a conflict. I don't want the fact that you are family. Mate, we're not yours. that close. No, no offence. Yeah, no. <laughs> Melanie, what do you think? We need to have a little talk about it. Yeah. Can Sharon come with us and someone yeah. stand there? Uh, yeah, I'll sort the dog out. Um, Glenn, I'd be good. I know We'd you would. We'd be good together. I don't need you. I know you don't need me, but I could... Well, actually, you do need me. What am I saying? You do need me. Like, I would love Janine because I know what she does. Yeah. Yeah, I've seen some good stuff come from her. But then I think, um, family... Like, a, I, I would personally... Yeah. yeah. I do not... I don't know Mel from Adam, to be honest. I, I saw her as a little girl. We have... I've had nothing to do with her. I know her sister. You look good up there with that dog. I that don't looks great. know Mel. I actually don't know her. So what about 40 and 10%? With Janine? Yeah. Yeah. 40%, 10%. Ooh. Can we... Can I have a little bit more? You sound like a dolphin, not a shark. <laughs> no, I actually, I love the product. Yeah, 40, 10. I don't think they'll give you half their business. What about give him 40, you keep 40 and give Janine 20 and up the price? 35, 15, Janine. She, she's got to go 50%. Seriously, the amount of work we're going to do. So you've got an offer from Glenn for 50% for 150000 and Janine's trying to get in on the deal. They've both been arguing the hell out of it. You've gone out there to have a think. What did you come up with? Can I, before you say anything, um, Glenn and I did chat. I wanted to actually go half of whatever he offers. Uh, he's not prepared to go half, the, the little cherub, um, but he is prepared to do 35% and I'll take 15%, which I agree with. So the offer that's currently on the table at the moment is 35% with Glenn and 15% with me. But just so you know, though, you can actually just take Glenn on your own if you want. OK. And the decision is? It's a big deal. <laughs> it is. It's huge. It's massive. So, yes, we'll take the 15 and the 35. Well done. Good decision. Thank you. Sorry, good decision. Thank you very much. Pleasure. Pleasure. Well done. Thank, Thank you. you. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well Thank done. You. Congratulations. Woof, woof. You got a deal to yeah. the sharks. Congratulations. Yeah, yeah. So pleased and so happy. Yeah, the two sharks yeah. that we really wanted to get. We're really, really looking forward to working with them both. I'm, re I'm actually really excited. Yeah. It's a mongrel of a business to get there, bro. <laughs> <laughs>